All right. Well, thank you for being here today with us. My name is Glenn Schwarm, and I'm here to take you through the real estate investing formula, your path to financial freedom. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself and my wife and business partner, Amber, and what we've done and how we've built the empire that we've built. But before I get to that, I just want to summarize and say this. Real estate investing was a vehicle that totally changed our lives. We were deep in debt and trying to find ways to make money. And we had to find ways to make large chunks of money legally. And we just we stumbled onto flipping houses and investing in real estate and all the things that go along with that. And for us, it was an absolute game changer. And I have a feeling that you're here because you're seeking something too. And you've heard about people that are making money and you're saying to yourself, I want a better life. How do I get there? And I'm telling you that it, we are just average people, right? We were not born with a silver spoon in our mouth. We're just average people that were grinding out to, to build a better life for ourselves and our family. And we we're seeking an answer. And we found that answer through real estate investing back in 2007, so many, many years ago. You and I are very similar. I haven't met you yet. I hope to meet you very soon in the very near future, either on Zoom or in person. But we're very similar. You know how I know we're similar? You're an action taker. I call that being a 10 percenter. A 10 percenter are people that take action. There's so many people in life that think about wanting a better life. They dream about wanting a better life. They have aspirations for a better life, but they never do anything. When we run ads to have you come to this free training today, there are tens of thousands of people that see the ad and there are thousands of people, tens of thousands that never do anything. They tell themselves lots of stories like it's a scam. Those don't work. You can't make money in real estate. It's too expensive. They have all kinds of BS stories they tell themselves and it's not real. But they tell themselves stories because they just refuse to take action because fear gets in their way. But that's not you. That's not you. You know how I know? You're here today. You know, back in 07, Amber and I went to something very similar. We drove to a workshop and listened and listened to a woman speak. And she talked about all these houses she had done. And I started to learn about what she was doing. And so our life changed from that moment forward because we took action. And I have the utmost respect for you, and I know Amber does too, because you took action too. So you're in the right place because we are looking to work with action takers. And I'm looking forward to jumping into this. Now, let me tell you this, a couple things. I get pretty passionate when I talk about real estate investing and helping people change their lives like we changed our lives through real estate investing, right? We just help average people like us change their lives through real estate investing. So I get excited about that. So I talk fast. So if you could listen quickly, that'll help us get along better, okay? I will do my best to, to keep the pace down, but I do get pretty jacked up at times, so I'll just let you know that in advance. And I want to tell you this. I don't know about you. I have been to a lot of these types of workshops, trainings, whatever you want to call them, online, and a lot of them talk about fluff for hours, and they never get to any meat. I hate that. I don't know about you. Are you with me? I don't like that. Like, it, to me, it's a complete waste of time. So... I'm not going to do that to you today because that is not how Amber and I roll. That's not how our trainings go. We like to give it right to you out of the gates. So here we go. Do me a favor, get your pen and get your paper out because I'm going to jump into the two most important questions that people ask about real estate investing. And I'm going to start giving you real content, like real solid content, actionable items that someone like you who takes action can take action right away. Do me one more favor as we get started. Don't treat this like a free training. If you're distracted and you're not thinking, you're kind of off doing 10 other things or whatever, you're not going to get what we're giving. And we're going to give you so much value. I'm going to blow your mind with how much value I give you here through this workshop in the next 90 minutes. So please take notes, pay attention, and start thinking about how your life can look different if you took action through the steps I'm about to give you. Let's jump right in. Okay, here we go. So what are, the most two, what are the two most important questions we get about real estate investing? We get a lot of questions about real estate investing, but we have narrowed it down to the top two. And number one, and I'm, I bet you this is yours. How do I get the money to get started? I want to be a real estate investor, but I don't have any money. We have this misconception that because the title is real estate investing, we have to have money to invest. The truth is we need time and we need resources, we don't necessarily need money to invest. You can do it with money, but I'm gonna show you how the professionals do it. The next thing that we get asked all the time is, but Glenn, the market is crazy right now. Like, how do I even find the deals? How do I even find deals? Because they get snatched up like crazy in this market. Well, 
like I said, I'm going to spend right now teaching you how the pros do it in any market, but especially in a market this crazy like this. So you ready for this? Get ready for some notes. 14 ways to find money for your deals. How about that? We're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right to it. Not one, not two, not 10, but 14 ways to find money for your deals. This is going to get a little bit granular, but I hope you stay with me because I, I, these are things that can really change your life once you learn. My goal for this segment is for you to understand how you can finance real estate because if you have the confidence behind you, you'll make more offers on houses, won't you? Like if you knew you had the money, if you knew you could offer something that was a win-win situation, wouldn't you make more offers? Therefore, wouldn't you make more money towards your goal? It all becomes logical when you think about it. So let's break it down. Number one, owner or seller financing. Most people have this thing in their head, like they go buy a house, so we have to go to a bank and we got to borrow the money and that's how it works. And I, I couldn't do that. That's not how it works in the real estate investing world. All right, I'm going to show you some ways. Owner financing is one of those things. Owner financing is when you ask the seller to hold the note. In other words, let the seller be the bank. Now, I'm going to give you an example of what we've done with this that works. When flipping a house, there's been many times that my, myself and our team has made an offer to somebody. And let's say, let's say that we want to pay $90,000 for a house. We do all of our numbers. We use what's called our home flipping evaluator. I'm going to show you that a little bit later. Talk about it and show you a way you can get it actually today. And um, let's say that we run all the numbers and we say, listen, we can pay $90,000 for this house. And if we do, we can make a substantial profit for ourselves. So we make our offer at 90,000. But the seller says, I'm sorry, I have to get $100,000 for the house. Here's an alternative. It's something you can do right now, right? On a deal like that, you can say, okay, Mr. Seller, I'll tell you what I like to do. I'll give you your $100,000, but I'm going to give it to you in six months when I finish flipping the house. And I'll take care of all the other costs on my own. I'll, you know, I'll pay you that money. We'll drop all the paperwork. You'll be protected with a mortgage, with a note and it'll be fully insured and you'll be listed as an additional insured. So if something happens, you always are protected. And there, therefore, they can get the higher number they want. And if you structure it right, it could be interest-free. How about that? And you can do it without any payments either, right? Because owner financing is totally flexible. We have done this numerous times. There's one, one uh, that comes to mind. As a gentleman we bought a house from that was, had some major health concerns and had to get out of the house and had to move quickly, didn't need the money. He already had another house. He was going through a divorce too. So it was very, you know, most of the situations where you find great deals, it's very muddy. And so during this muddy situation, he wanted to get a higher number. I think it was around $120,000. We were willing to pay like 105 or 110. I forgot the exact numbers, but uh, we've done hundreds of deals. So, but I remember this deal specifically. And we went back and said, okay, we'll give you the 120. We're going to give it to you in six months. He said, well, that's interesting. I said, I, I was going to have it anyways. So, okay, I'm in. And so we drew up the paperwork with him. We flipped the house. We actually put all of the renovations on credit cards, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then flipped the house, sold it. And at the closing table, he got his $120,000. We got all the rest. Now, in that particular deal, we made over $50,000 when the dust settled. And he still made his $120,000 because he was the bank. Pretty clever, right? So think about that. That's number one is owner or seller financing. It's a very simple way you can get started right now. Now, will every seller do this? No, not every seller will do it. But is it good to know it's available? Can you at least present it? The worst I can say is no, right? Worst thing I can say is no. How about a joint venture agreement? I hope you're taking notes on these guys. So please do me a favor, write joint venture agreement. A joint venture agreement is when you go into a joint venture, joint being more than one, right? Two people, you go into a joint venture agreement where you say, okay, I'm going to partner with somebody on this deal. It might be a contractor. It might be a brother of yours. It might be um, the real estate agent on the deal. I don't know who it might be, but somebody that has resources. Maybe they have money and you have time and skill, so you make a deal, right? It's a joint venture. Maybe, you ready for this? Maybe it's the seller. There are some sellers that will joint venture with you because they know their house needs work. And they say, look, I'd like to flip the house. I just don't know how to do it. And you can say, listen, I will do that. I will partner with you since you own the house, right? You keep paying the taxes. You keep paying the utilities. You keep paying the insurance. Leave the house in your name. 
I'll draw up a joint venture agreement with you saying that I'm going to come in and paint the house, you know, fix that back porch. I'm going to, I'm going to put a new roof on. I'm going to do the things that have to be done. You won't do it yourself, by the way. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But you're going to come in and do those things for the person. And then when you sell the house, there'll be a profit and you guys could split the profit. 70, 30, 50, 50, 90, 10. I don't care what it is. That is your option. But that's a joint venture agreement. You go into a joint venture with somebody else and that's a way that you can do this. Now, I want you to notice that none of these things have required any of your own money or credit yet, have they? Stay tuned. I got more for that, right? Lease options. Lease options are pretty cool. A lease options, you can go to somebody and it's similar to seller financing, but the title never leaves the seller uh, in this transaction. So a lease option means I go to you and you have a house that you want to sell for, you know, whatever the number might be. And let's say you say, listen, um, I don't have that, but what I'd like to do is pay you a thousand dollars a month. I want to lease the property with the option to buy. So let's say that person says, okay, you can do that. And maybe you do it with zero down, right? I'm going to encourage you to offer zero down. And now you're paying $1,000 a month to that person. Do you know you can take that same lease if, you're, if you have the right paperwork and you're being coached correctly and know what to do? You could actually take that same agreement. You could take that same house, paint it up, fix it up, make it look nice. You could release or sublease it to somebody else as owner financing. You could sell it to somebody else with owner financing, get them to give you five or $10,000 down. So that's cash in your pocket. That would make up for any of the you know, repairs you do with that kind of stuff. And then you could charge $1,500 a month, right? For an owner finance kind of a deal. Now you're making monthly money, plus you got $10,000 down and you don't even own the property. One of the beauties in real estate is you don't necessarily have to own everything. You just want to control everything. And I'm giving you options on how to do that. I'm showing, showing you things that you may or may not have thought about before. Everything I'm doing here, by the way, is to open your eyes to a new way of thinking. We've all got these old, archaic ways that we think business needs to be done, or we think things need to happen. But it's not until someone like me comes along and opens your eyes that you see there's other ways to accomplish your goals. So I hope that as you're taking notes that you're saying, okay, yes, I'm confused. He's talking fast, lots of stuff going on, but I'm understanding the concept. And the concept is there are a lot of ways to get this done, right? What's the saying? A lot of ways to skin the cat. I never knew who was skinning cats in that stupid saying, but I mean, nonetheless, there's a lot of ways to get it done, right? How about private lending? Private lending is one of my personal favorites. It's how Amber and I got started many, many years ago. Private lending is not maybe what you think. Some people think when they go to private lending, that is when private individuals give you the money to buy the house and do the renovation, right? They become the bank. A private lender becomes the bank. You might think to yourself, I don't know any private lenders. Yes, you do. I can guarantee you they are already in your circle or in your friends' circles. These are just people that have a little extra money they want to invest. 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, right? Whatever it might be, these are people that have a little bit of money set aside and they want to earn more. They don't like the stock market. They're not a fan of the stock market. They don't like the ups and downs, the roller coaster ride. And they would much prefer to lend someone like you money, especially when it's protected by a piece of real estate. Amber and I started doing this from the get-go, right? We had some, uh, some financial problems because the banks ripped away all the funding way back in 2007. We had to figure out how to do this. So we went to some friends and started asking questions. And it took a long time, but we finally figured out a system that now we teach our students on how to go out there and raise private money. And again, it's not from giant corporations or giant um, lending companies or banks. It's just average people that have a little bit of money and they want to get a better return on their investment. And you can protect their investment because it's backed by a piece of real estate. And they get a higher interest rate. And it's a very cool way to do it. Again, this is how Amber and I fund 90% of all of our renovations today. Okay, That's how we fund all of them, is through private lending and private investors. That's a great way to do it. And again, we will be talking about that and show you how you can learn more from us about private lending and how you can raise money for your deals as well. Okay, I know that I'm overwhelming you, so I hope you're staying with me. Most people say I want to have a lot of content, so now I'm giving it to you, so I don't want you to feel like, oh my God, he really is. But I want to deliver value to show you that we're all about helping you reach your goals. Amber and I have already reached our goals. Now we have new goals, right? And so we're helping you reach your goals by giving you these skills. Subject to financing. Let's talk a little bit about this. This is going to be important because of where we are in history. 
Subject to means that you can take over somebody's payments on a property, take over the bank's payments, and what the subject to means is subject to um, all existing liens on the property. So, right now we are at a crazy time in history, right? The pandemic is winding down or starting up or who knows where we're at. It keeps making all kinds of changes. But regardless, forbearance has been a term maybe you've heard about. Forbearance is that people have not had to pay the banks their mortgages, have they, for a long time. There are over 1.5 million people that are in forbearance, which means that's a lot of people that are going to foreclosure. Now, the banks will work out some deals with them, but a lot of them won't be able to keep up. They haven't been making payments on their house for a year and a half. They're behind. They're going to go into what's called pre-foreclosure, pre-foreclosure. And people that are struggling, they have other problems. There are people that won't be able to make their payments. You could step in and take over those payments. And I'm not saying you have to qualify by going to the bank. I'm saying by signing a piece of paper, you can take over the payments on a house with subject to financing and control that piece of property. There's a little more to it than that. And I can't go into everything here today, but I'm giving the concept of subject to financing. Imagine that you stumble onto somebody that is about two months behind on their mortgage payment. Let's say they're $3,000 behind on their mortgage payment. Like, let's say the payment is $1,500 a month and they're behind two payments. What if you could walk in and give them $3,000 and bring their mortgage current and then take over the payments and they move on? People that sell their house to you is subject to, usually you're in a place where they say, just take over my payments, just get me out of this thing and I'm good. You can save their credit, right, which is a win-win situation. You can make the payments for them and you can control that piece of property. You could flip it, you could rent it. You know, the exit strategy is something different. Right now, I'm just talking about how you could finance that deal and using subject to is a very powerful way to do that. It also works great when you're flipping a house. Again, take over their payments, improve the house, sell it for a profit. At that time, you'll pay off that loan because it's a lien, but that's a way you can do this without any risk on your part, okay? Or minimal risk, I say, on your part. Okay, I know I'm throwing a lot at you. Hopefully you're taking lots of notes here. Others, home equity. We'll talk about your home equity in a minute, but other people's home equity. When Amber and I first got started, our good friend uh, wanted to be an investor. We, were, we, were, we had two houses under contract and the banks pulled all their funding back in 2007. And we were like, uh, we're screwed. Like we had no money. We're trying to figure this out. We were, we we're on our second and third flip. And the first flip, we made a little bit of money, but these next two flips were like, we don't know what we're going to do. So we talked to a friend and said, would you ever want to invest? She said, I would love to be a real estate investor, like to loan you money. I just don't have any money to loan. So over some thoughts and some questions and some lunch, I said, you, guys, you have a really nice home. Do you, have, do you have equity? She goes, oh yeah, we have a lot of equity, a couple hundred thousand. I go, do you have access to the equity? She goes, yeah, we have a lot of credit. I go, now we're talking. What if you used your line of credit to back us in our deal? It was going to cost her 4% for her home equity line of credit, but I was going to pay her 14% to borrow money that wasn't even hers. Do you know she's an investor to this day, 15 some years later, and now has converted all kinds of investments to us, and we, we just love her to death, but she was a game changer for us because we knew what to do. We had access to her home equity, and that allowed us, with the right paybook, with the right structure, that allowed us to start flipping houses. Without her, I don't know if we'd be where we are today. Sometimes you see that one break, but other people's home equity, that was a game changer for us. And that can be a game changer for you. I hope that right now your wheels are spinning. And I hope that by the time this is done today, that you're going to go, oh my God, like this is nuts. Like you guys really have got this stuff dialed in. Land contracts. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on a land contract because just I can't spend hours on every one of these. I could, but I can't today. A land contract is when you simply make payments to somebody else. It's like seller financing, but you don't take ownership of the property. In other words, you control the property. So let's say you had a house for sale. Let's use the you know, $100,000 mark just so it's an easy number to talk about. And let's say that you say, okay, I'll sell you the house, but I want 500 bucks a month. Great. I agree to pay you 500 bucks a month on a land contract. The land contract says, as soon as you're done making all the payments or you pay me the balance, at that point, I will turn the title over to you, okay? That's a way you can use to flip houses. You can do it for long-term rents. You can do it for your own house if you want to, right? And that's another way you can control a piece of property through a contract, okay? 
SDIRA. What that stands for? Self-directed IRA. I'll say it again for you guys who are writing it down. Self-directed IRA. There are IRAs out there. There are retirement vehicles that are designed for you to invest in the stock market, right? That's a very common thing, invest in the stock market. Invest in mutual funds or whatever. But did you know that with the right vehicle and knowing the right people and having the right third-party fiduciary companies that help you structure and set this up, you could actually invest that money in whatever you want to invest it in. It's called a self-directed IRA. Do you know out of the millions that we've got over $5 million in private lender funds that we use, I think over $3 million is in self-directed IRAs, other people's self-directed IRAs that they loan money to us as private lenders. So people have access to money that they don't even know they have access to until you teach them how to do that. So a self-directed IRA, you may have your own self-directed IRA, or you may have your own IRA that you can convert to a self-directed IRA and use those funds to invest. You didn't even know you could do that, did you? But now you do. Partnering. We sort of touched on this before in the joint venture agreement, but partnering. This is when you partner with somebody else, right? When you partner with somebody else on a deal. Maybe you have a business you want to partner with. Maybe it's a, a brother or a best friend or a mom or a dad or uncle or aunt or cousin or whomever it might be. Maybe you want to partner with them because they've got skills, right? And you've got money or vice versa. You could have multiple partners in a deal like this too if you want to. I'd warn you, the more partners, the more complication it can get. But usually one partner is, is good. And a lot of people start with a partnership because maybe you both have a little bit of money, but you don't really have enough to, you know, individually, but together you can do more. Sometimes by putting your, um, your resources together, you can do that much more. So that's a way that you can do this when you're going after a deal, all right? Now wait for it. Think about what we just talked about. Owner, seller financing, lease options, subject to land contract, partnering, joint venture agreements, right, with the seller and all that. Private lending, others' home equity, self-directed IRA. Think about it for just a second. None of these methods require any of your own credit, do they? None of these methods require any of your own credit. I've just shown you a ton of ways that don't require any of your own credit. Now I want to show you a couple of our successful students who have attended our home filming workshop and have become students of ours, and we have helped them do these deals. Anacita purchased a house from a guy that she heard of as a referral. She heard as a referral from somebody, and she talked to him. And he was falling behind on payments and whatnot. And she, through an owner financing deal, an owner financing deal, was able to take ownership of that house without any credit check, without putting any of her own money down. I think she had to bring, I think she had to bring a few of his payments current to get him current. But she set up an owner finance deal on this piece of property. She got it renovated. We helped her do that. She flipped that house and made a $78,000 profit. Right? We're very proud of Anacita for that. These are people using the same exact method we're just talking about. Next is Josh and Crystal. So Anacita used, used owner financing. Josh and Crystal, on their deal, they used partnering. who they partner with? Their mom and dad. Their mom and dad had the money, they had the funds, and Josh and his wife had the time and the resource to get it done. And they did. And they partnered this deal together, and boom, they made 55,800 bucks. Now they had a split, you know, with their, with their dad, I don't know if it's 50-50 or I don't know what the terms were, but nonetheless, even if you had to split 50-50, it's still 27 grand each, not a bad day, right? And no money out of their own pocket because they had a partner that brought money to the table. Pretty awesome, right? If you have good credit, well, I've got better news for you, right? So even if you have not great credit, you can still use all the other methods. You know, Amber and I, we, we still do over 100 houses a year and we don't use any of our own money or our own credit. We use private lenders. So we don't use our own money or own credit, but we have options if we want to. So for you who say, listen, I have good credit, just because there's a no credit method doesn't mean you have to have bad credit to use it. Now, it helps people to have bad credit to use it, right? But that's not what you need. Now, if you have good credit, you can use all the methods we just talked about, all those different methods I just listed out, which hopefully you took notes for. Plus, you can use credit cards. You know, we've done so much on credit cards, it's crazy over the years. But we can use credit cards for a lot. We've actually bought houses with the cash from credit cards. There are some very screaming low deals that you can buy houses for. You can use funds from credit cards. You can renovate houses on credit cards. You can pay for um, you know, business costs, advertising costs, that kind of stuff. But that you can use credit cards for. Right? I'm trying to show you how to fund your deals and fund your business. Hard money lenders. These are organizations that are designed 
to lend money to higher risk individuals. A real estate flipper, especially a brand new one, is a higher risk to an investor. Right? It's not the same as a bank loan to a, a homeowner who's going to live there. It's a little more risky to them as an investor, so they will loan money. Those rates are anywhere from 10 to 14 percent, sometimes more, just depends on the lender. But um, they're, they're out there. They're not the mob. They're not going to break your legs if you don't do the deal. Right? They will take your house if you, don't, if you don't pay the bill back, but that's not what we're talking about here today. But hard money lenders are an option. They're a viable way to fund your deals. Now, they won't do 100% financing. You have to have some of your own skin in the game. But all the methods we're talking about, you can combine those to kind of do these deals without any money in your own pocket, okay? You can always use banks. They're very limited on what they'll do. But if you have a great relationship with the bank and great credit there, you can do a limited amount of deals in lines of credit with bank. And that leads me to my next thing, commercial loans or lines of credit. Some of you have a business and you might have a line of credit for your business. Some people have a line of credit for themselves personally. A lot of people don't, but it's possible to have a line of credit and then use that towards funding your real estate deals. And we have students that do that, right? Home equity. We talked about others' home equity. Now let's talk about your home equity. If you have a home, access that equity. Rates are the lowest they've been in years. It's crazy how long it's been this low and no one sees anything in the future to say it's not gonna keep staying low. I mean, eventually we think it's gonna have to go up, but we've been saying that for years and it hasn't. So we're not sure, but take advantage and get access to any equity you have in a piece of property. Because if you can use your own money, let's say you had access to $100,000 of equity in your house. If you had access to that money, and you could go flip a house with your own money that you borrow from your equity, right? And just pay yourself, pay the bank a little bit of interest on that. What a great way to flip a house and make a ton of money. I'm gonna show you in a minute what people make when they flip houses. I'm gonna show you the national average. But understand you could use your own home equity to do that. Powerful, right? So I just shown you 14 ways and I've shown you students and I've told you my own stories about how you can fund deals. Now I hope just after this, this first segment, and we have a lot more to go. I hope after this first segment, you're saying to yourself, okay, I have a little more confidence now, right? A little more confidence that there are options out there. Now, again, I could spend, I could spend five hours on each one of those. Some of those I could spend a day on all by themselves to get you to do it. Obviously, we have limited time here today, so I'm doing the best I can to load you up with information and knowledge so you're confident moving forward as a real estate investor. That is my goal is to help you to, to remain very confident. So the more knowledge you have, the more confidence you're gonna have. What you're really being introduced here today is a very successful proven business model to create wealth. Now I wanna set, set the tone for a couple things. Is it faster than other models to build wealth? People say, oh, you can make money faster than real estate. You can, right, you can. And it is a lot faster than other methods because of the size of the money you can make, the size of the, uh, the investment or the returns you can make, you can build wealth a lot faster. So absolutely, it is faster than other methods, right? Faster than methods. But I wanna make sure I'm very clear about this. This is not a get rich quick scheme, okay? This is truly a business system that takes work. You'll always hear me say anything you, anytime you hang around Amber or I or follow us online or come to our workshops or whatever you do, you're always gonna hear me say, what we do is work, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it because of the income and the lifestyle this creates. Now, if you're somebody who's already doing flips, you're already doing rentals, we can make you better. Promise you we can make you better by teaching you some basic systems to scale your business. Now through this today, here's what's happening. We are looking for a handful of people to personally mentor to build the life of their dreams. So stay tuned and I'm gonna talk about that. As you're thinking about real estate investing, you know, why would you want to learn about real estate investing? Here's some stats I think you should know as we're diving in today. We have a lot more to go. 93% of all the wealthiest people in the world have made their money in real estate. Bottom line, it's the best way for average people like us to build wealth and to build it fast. Best way for average people like us to do that, right? Next question. Is it a good time to start investing in real estate? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Historically speaking, it's the absolute best time in history. It's the best time. If you follow the trends and the experts, which I always don't follow them necessarily, but know this, according to most real estate investing experts, this will be one of the greatest shifts in wealth our country's ever seen. Everything that's happened in the past with the forbearance, everything that's happened here, it's been nuts. 
and all these people are going to be coming due and there's a lot of wealth going to be shifting. Interest rates are crazy low. Giant players are coming in the space and they are buying houses by the hundreds and by the thousands. So is it a great time to be in there? Yes. You want to catch those kind of waves and you want to get involved during those times. Again, COVID changed everything. COVID changed everything, right? And it's time for you to capitalize on those changes. But you got to be have your eyes open and be aware. And that's what we're showing you here today is how to be aware and how to jump on those changes so you can make a change for your family, for your family and your future. According to nationalmortgagelender.com, the average profit from a flip is over $63,500 in the past 12 months. Let me say it again. The average profit, that means some are lower, some are higher. Average profit from a flip is over $63,500. Here's my question to you. What would you do with an extra $63,500 this year? Like if you woke up tomorrow and there was $63,500 in your account tomorrow morning, would that be different? Would that be a good day? Or would you wake up and go, this is awesome? Or would you be like, eh, whatever, just 63 grand, right? What would you do with it? Like if you, if you, yeah, that was boom, you had it, what would you do? Would you pay off debt? Would you buy a new car? Would you leave your job? Maybe you hate what you do for a living. You ever hear the acronym for job, J-O-B? Just over broke. I've heard that many times, right? Just over broke. Would you pay for education? Maybe your education, maybe you wanna go back to school, maybe you wanna learn a new trade, whatever, right? Maybe your kids, they don't really give that anyway anymore, do they? College is crazy expensive these days or private schools, or whatever you want to do with your kids. Would you enjoy more time with your family? Would that money allow you to enjoy more time with your family? And what I'm talking about, this 63000 is not about the money. It's about what the money can do for you. I want you to think about that. It's what the money can do for you. Would you finally take that dream vacation that you've been sitting around dreaming about and staring at your computer screen, looking up and think, man, that'd be beautiful. It'd be so nice to be there. I'd love to be out of this winter and be in that warm weather. Are you done dreaming about it? right? Remember, you're an action taker because you're here today. So I love you already. So I know you're already thinking, your brain's already churning. Would you save for retirement, right? We're going to do an exercise here in just a minute talking about how people are prepared for retirement. And most people are not prepared for retirement. Would you finally stop being sick and tired of the pressure the lack of money can bring? You'll always hear me say that money will not bring you happiness. But the lack of money brings such stress, it's very hard to see happiness when you're buried under a mound of financial pressure. So no, money doesn't make you happy, but lack of money adds so much stress. Would you like to be free of that, right? The point is this, there's life-changing money in real estate investing if, if, if you do it right. If you do it right, right? Follow people that are doing it the right way. Learn how to do it the right way. And if you do, you can make life changing money like Amber and I have. We've just averaged people that wanted a better life for our family. That's it. All right, next big nugget. The big question was, how do I find deals in this crazy market? So let's dive into this, right? If you, if you stop taking notes for a minute, I hope you pick up your pen and start taking more notes right now. Finding the deals in this market. Here's a huge nugget. Off-market deals are the only place true deals can be found. If you are online, meaning if you're buying on market properties off the MLS, off Zillow, uh, off of whatever real estate agent sends you that's already listed uh, in your town, if it's already on a list. One time I went to a, wor a workshop and a guy said, if, if, the, if, the, deals, if the, the deals on a list, or let's see, if the, if the name's on a list, the deal don't exist. It was a strange thing, but it's the only thing I remember from this workshop I went to. And he was right though. Right? If it's a public, if it's a public knowledge, like if everyone knows the house is available in this market, especially, it's not a deal, right? Because people will massively bid it up. You want to find the off-market deals, right? Online buyers pay full retail or more. On market, on price. You want to be off-market. Okay, remember that. Write down. I want to be an off-market deals. Separate yourself by finding all of only what we call motivated sellers. Motivated sellers. Please write that down. Separate yourself by finding motivated sellers. Now, what is a motivated seller? You may have heard that term before. You may say, yeah, I, I kind of know. Well, let's talk about what it really means. I'm going to give you some exact things right now. They have to sell now because they want or need cash, period, right? Why would someone be in that position? Well, 
Here's the D's of your future as a real estate investor. Ready? Death, disease, divorce. Maybe they've been downsized. Maybe they're just disgusted. They hate their neighbors or they don't like their neighbor or whatever. It's been a disaster in the area. The house is dilapidated beyond repair or maybe it's even decaying, right? Maybe it just has been vacant for so many years. Those are all people that are motivated sellers. If they have a home or they have a situation in their life that has created one of these things, odds are they are a motivated, they want their cash out of their house now so they can move. They don't want to fix it. They don't want to repair it. They don't want to make it look better. They don't want top dollar because they want the money now. And that's where you come in. So how do you find these hot off-market deals? Well, you can do it with time or money or both. I'm going to show you both methods here right now. Now, here's where no investment of money is required. So this is what I call legwork, right? You're not going to have to invest any money to make the phone ring to you. You're not going to have a marketing department, but you have to use your time to find the houses. You can go driving for dollars. Pretty self-explanatory. You drive around neighborhoods and you look for those ugly, rundown, vacant, dilapidated houses, right? That's driving for dollars. Here's a tip. Drive a different way home from work, different way home from school, different way home from church. Whatever you do on a regular basis, drive different ways. You could probably still be home at the same time, maybe five minutes later, but you can look for opportunity. Driving for dollars means you look with your eyes and say, hey, that's overgrown, and then figure out who the owner is. I'll show you how we do that in just a minute. Next is referrals. Referrals cost you nothing. Just open your yapper, right? Just talk to people that might be around motivated sellers and let them know that you're in the market to buy houses. Now, we just talked about all the ways you can fund houses, right? So once you have some confidence there, now you can tell people, listen, I want to be a real estate investor. You got to start the, remember, you're an action taker. So remember, start that momentum. Keep it going. Networking. Just again, networking with other professionals, maybe with real estate agents, right? Maybe with appraisers, maybe with divorce attorneys or real estate attorneys or um, estate companies. Those are all people that are in front of people that are probably going to have a house for sale. And so if you can network and let those people know, that makes the phone ring to you. It doesn't cost anything. Some of you might be saying, well, wait, I'm waiting for the magic pill. I love people to say, don't you have some fancy new app does everything for me? Well, Get a hold of yourself. No, like this is, it takes work, right? It takes work, but this is simple things. These are simple, basic things that if you just do them on a rate, these, if you're a baseball fan, these are the base hits of the game. Games are won on base hits, right? That's how baseball games are won on base hits, right? That's how they're won. Yeah, home runs are great once in a while. These are simple things you can do every day to advance your business. Flyers, you can post flyers around town with we buy houses signs, right? You can leave cards on doors. I'm thinking about a house that we bought early in our career. And it was a combination of two. Here's the combination. I'm not going to say it was driving for dollars. It was more walking for dollars. Now, we were walking the neighborhood and we saw a house that had an odor coming from it. And the trees had grown up and it didn't look very good. And we decided to put a card on the outside of the mailbox. And said, I'd like to buy your house for cash. Now, we are brand new and didn't have any cash. But I knew I could come up with something clever. I didn't know what, but I figured if I could talk to the seller and see what their needs were, maybe I could make a deal. And I didn't know anything. It was our third house we'd ever done. And so I put a card on the mailbox. I walked by a couple days later, I noticed my card was gone. So I put another card and said, if you'd like to talk, please give me a call. They called. And I had a conversation about the house and found out that their mom had recently passed from Alzheimer's and it was a tough situation. And the house needed a lot of work. I actually partnered with them, just like I talked about a minute ago. I partnered with them, Amber and I partnered with them, and we fixed the house. They kept the house in their name. We fixed it with our credit cards and whatnot. We borrowed money to do that. We fixed the house up. We sold it. We made, we made over a seventy or $63,000 profit on that deal, right? All because I walked around and put my card there and said, I'm, if you're looking for an offer, let me know. I never had to bid against anybody else. They called me. Because why? It's an off-market deal, right? 
You're not out there with every Tom, Dick, and Harry that's bidding against you going crazy. That's not what you want to do. Everyone says, how do you guys find 100 deals a year? Because we're not looking in the same place that everybody else is looking. If you're looking online, you're not going to find it. I'm giving you these tips right now. Here's the next one. Mail carriers. You ever think about that? Who do you think knows more about the neighborhood? You or a mail carrier? Mail carrier knows what mail is going to people's house. They know who's dying. They know who's sick. They know who's divorcing. They know. They're, they're kind of nosy people. They just know. So what I'm encouraging you to do is get close to your mail carrier and say, listen, if you know something, let me know. Are they supposed to? I don't know. But they do, right? They do. They're just people like you. Usually they're neighbors that live in the neighborhood. And they can let you know. These are ways you can network and find that. It doesn't cost you any money. These are, I hope you've written these down because if you're saying to yourself, well, it's just talking to people. Well, you're missing the boat. That's a lot of money right there. That's a lot of money, right? And I just share with you some stories of things that have really worked. And I'm going to share one of my students in just a minute. And next is wholesalers. Now, I'm going to talk about what wholesaling is in a minute when you sell houses to make money because we do a lot of that. But you can find people that are selling houses on a regular basis. When you find those people, they can bring you off-market deals. Now, you're going to be other people bidding against you usually, but maybe not. It's good to get to know your local wholesalers in your market. Here's a couple more of our students. I love these stories. So Shane had a house that he flipped, and he made a $55,000 profit on this house. You know how Shane found that house? Driving for dollars. He drove around. You can see the, you can see the house on the left. It's not pretty, right? So he drove around, saw that house, did some inquiring, did some research online, found out the owner, and said, look, would you like to you know, sell the house? And they were thrilled that somebody reached out. You see, these people that have these the houses that are dilapidated, they're not proud of that house, are they? They don't want to call a real estate agent and say, hey, come look at my house. They're afraid of what that person's going to say to them. They're embarrassed about the condition. But when Shane called and used the script that we gave him and said, look it, you know, I don't care. And by the way, I'll, I'll buy the house and you can just leave everything in the house and just take what you want and I'll, I'll deal with the rest. I don't have to clean it. You don't have to fix anything. I don't care if the pipes are burst. I don't care. Here's my price and this is what I want to give you. He did that deal and boom, $55,000 later. Now, Kristen and Neil. Kristen and Neil bought this house as a referral. They were networking with a local real estate agent. Check this out. If you get good at networking, you can let real estate agents know if they find a deal before they list it, please hear me on this, before they list it on the market, say, just come and talk to me and let me make an offer. Do most real estate agents want to list a house that looks like the house in the picture with Kristen and Neil? Look at that top house. The roof had a huge hole in it. There was leaking, right? Windows were busted. It had been vacant for a long time. Do you think a real estate agent really wants to list that? Number one, it's low dollars. Number two, it's not a prime piece of property they're going to, they, they fall in love with. There's not a lot of money in it for commissions, right? They don't want to deal with all the headaches that go along with something like that. So if, when Kristen, who we taught how to go out and find that referral, she found the agent and said, listen, if you ever find anything, let me know. Within a week, she called her and said, uh, I do have something. It's, it's in rough shape. And Kristen said, I'm listening because in our world, rough shape means money, right? We walk in to smell, smell mold or we smell water. We smell damage. We're like, that's money, baby. I can smell it. She went in the house, was able to make an offer to the seller before it ever hit the open market. Bought the house. The seller was thrilled. The agent was thrilled. Everyone got taken care of. She made $51,500 on that flip. That was, both of these stories I'm telling you are their first flips. Their first flips, okay? Let's continue on. I just said that off-market deals um, are the way to go. Here's a way that you can invest money and have the phone ring to you, Okay. So this is when you have targeted direct mail. So we've all got the postcards or letters, which we hate. I get it. We all hate those stupid things. But you know what? They work. There's a reason why they come to your door. There's a reason why giant corporations use direct mail. It still works. Email, not so much, right? Email is easy to delete. It's not so easy sometimes to delete a piece of paper or a postcard you get with your, with your house picture on it, which happens right now in the marketing world. It's crazy. But you can actually send letters to targeted lists. Now, I'm not saying you send a postcard to everybody. I'm saying that you target your list, right? We teach our students how to target their marketing. If you're going to spend money, you want to have a good ROI or return on investment. So, motivated seller leads. Here's some examples I'm going to give you today. Some of the, some of the best. Tax delinquent. 
You think somebody who's behind on their taxes a year or two or three or four, we've had people that are five and six years behind on taxes. Do you think they're behind on taxes and they're going to lose the house in a couple months to the tax auction? Are they motivated to sell? You bet they are, right? And you want to make sure you know who they are and get your face in front of them. How about code enforcement? People that just can't keep up with their house, right? They can't mow the lawn. There's a hole in the roof. There's a, neighbors are complaining because there's a broken fence, a broken porch, or maybe it's vacant. Right? Maybe it's a vacant house. Pre-foreclosure. These are people that are slipping into pre-foreclosure. They're not in foreclosure yet. They're usually within 90 days of being delinquent on their mortgage. Remember, we just talked about where we are in history. That's going to start happening a lot. And so the people that are here that can jump on that wave will be able to make tremendous wealth for themselves while helping other people get out of tough situations and not having a foreclosure on their record. It's a win-win. Vacant properties. How about tired landlords? How about landlords just sick and tired? And they're not even because they're disgusted. They just, they've been doing it for 40 years. They're 70 years old and they're just done. They just, do you think some of those owners might want to owner finance? Think about that for a minute. If you're a landlord used to getting thousands or tens of thousands every month because of the properties that you own, the rent, because maybe your properties are owned free and clear by then, and you're getting rent every month, well, they might be open to getting a payment from you every month by you taking over the properties? Yeah, pretty good idea, right? So everything I'm telling you, you can combine multiple methods to make this happen, right? Is your mind kind of doing this right now? Because we're not, we're not even done yet. We're not even halfway there yet. So here we go. How about high equity? People that own their house outright or almost own it outright. A lot of times those are good people to market to because they typically they're older. They paid the house off and they might want to move. You might be catching them at a good time. All right, these are lists you can buy. Now, driving for dollars, apps. There are apps that we work with. There's apps we refer our students to, actually. There are apps you can find online that are driving for dollars apps. Do you know there's apps you can take your smartphone, which I think every phone's a smartphone now. You can take your phone, and when you drive up to the property, there's an app where you can, you can actually take a picture of the property. Your phone through that app, because of your GPS, knows where you are, what property you're on. It pulls up a picture of that house. It knows where you are. And with the click of two buttons, it will send direct mail to that owner of that property right out of your phone. That's something you can invest money in, but that's how we can get them to call you. Very simple, right? That's the high tech. Looking for a high tech piece? There you go. Got your high tech piece now. All right. How about bandit signs? Let's go back to low tech for a minute. The bandit signs, as cra you, know, you know what the bandit sign is? A bandit sign is when it's, you see the sign that says, we buy houses. You know, as cheesy as they are, I can't tell you how many hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit, probably millions we've made over the years off the we buy houses signs. People tend to call those. They're not, you know, they go online. They're not sure who to trust online. But for some reason, seeing a sign in the middle of the highway, they call. I don't know why they do it, but they do. It doesn't make any sense, but they do. And they've been doing it for years. So if you see those around town, you think to yourself, who calls those? There's a reason why people invest money and put them out there. They work, right? They work. And we teach our students how to, how to do that correctly. Now, here's a, here's a tip as you're growing your business or someone who has already flipped some houses. I'm going to recommend that you always take 15% of your profits and re, reinvest it back into marketing to find those high profit off-market deals. The, the off-market deals are going to be your highest profit. And here's your insider value tip for today. We make our money when we buy in real estate. Make our money when we buy in real estate, all right? We realize that money when we sell. So if we buy it right, there's always money in the deal. If we buy it, if we buy it wrong, the house is only going to sell for what it's going to sell for, right? So you have to make your money when you buy. You've probably heard that before, but you have to make your money when you buy. We realize that money when we sell. Avoid costly mistakes and buy right. You have to buy right. The secret sauce in what we do, everybody's like, what is the real secret? This is one of them right now, right? Find off-market deals, and then buying right is the secret sauce. So many people go out there on their own, don't have a system, don't have a way to estimate, they just start throwing numbers, and they assume that because people are bidding up a certain number, that that must be the number. That is the worst way to invest. You have to know what you're doing and use a system to calculate these these numbers so you can buy right out of the gates. That's a secret sauce. So look, we have talked about a lot so far and I want to set some expectations for you and I right now. 
I'm giving you a lot of information and I'm guessing that by now your brain is starting to go like, holy crap, Glenn, that's a lot of information. I mean, I told you when you come to Free Workshop, we're going to show you that we're going to give you value. We are all about bringing value to people that are around us. That's what we do. That's what we love. That's how we give back. What do you do for a living? Just answer to yourself because, you know, answer to yourself. What do you do for a living? Are you a nurse? Are you a doctor? Are you a trucker? Are you an AV tech? Are you a... Uh, photographer, are you a uh, work at a cashier? I don't know. You know what is your what is your career? Are you a are you an architect? Are you a, a builder? What what do you do for a living? Right? Ask yourself this question: Could I learn your career in ninety minutes at a workshop? Like all the ins and outs. There's always someone that says, "Yeah, you could learn mine. It's easy." No, I couldn't. Even if I had to go flip burgers, that's that's a multi week process to learn that at McDonald's. Right? You have to take time to learn things. So I'm trying to set your expectations. You're not going to be a professional real estate investor in 90 minutes, okay? It's just not going to happen. It takes time for that, okay? So my, my, I said this earlier, and I just want to repeat it. Don't treat this like a free training. Treat today like you paid $1,000 for this education. If you treat this like you paid $1,000, I promise you'll get much, much more in return, okay? And I think that by now, you're starting to see like, wow, like, I'm a little overwhelmed. There's a lot of information here, right? And I've got more to give you, but I'm going to share with you how to get more information from us. So stay tuned. By the end of this training though, today, right now, you stay to the end with me, you're going to know exactly what you need to do to start a real estate investing business or to scale the one you have. So stay tuned and keep taking notes. You've heard me talk a little bit about Amber's in my background. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about us because this is about you today. But I think you should know who we are and what we're talking about and where we have our knowledge from. You know, Amber and I started back in 2007 and we were deep in debt, $80,000. If you've ever read our story or seen us on TV, you know, we were deep in debt, over $80,000 in credit card debt. And we had actually nothing. We flipped the house the first year. We figured it ourselves. We, we did it through blood, sweat, tears. We figured, uh, we think we flipped three the next year and seven the next year. And it took some time to get some momentum. But now our company actively flips over a hundred houses a year and growing. Now, our methods, this includes we, we wholesale houses, which I'm going to talk to you about in just a minute. We do flips, which you, this is what you're here for, right? We, we put on the home flipping workshop. And we do rentals, both long-term rentals, that's a traditional that you've heard of, and also short-term, Airbnbs. We do a lot of those as well. And we do those to build generational wealth. Now, here's a secret. We do all that without being a landlord. Now, we have done this by grinding. Nothing was given to us. We are average people, right? We're average people. We've got four kids. We've got kids going to school. We, we're, we're just average people, right? We, we just wanted a better life for our family, right? We were not born with a super, but we didn't have any special skills. We just wanted something better. So as a way of giving back, after we'd reached success, when, when Amber and I first started, I said, listen, I know that I really want to teach people how to do what we do so they can achieve financial independence and wealth like we have. I said, but before we do it, about my about the third flip, when Amber and I made about 33 grand on our third flip, I remember saying to myself, this is what I want to teach people. Like this is the one that can set people free. Like it's starting to set us free. I said, but before we do it, let's prove the model. Let's prove the model because there's so many idiots online that say, I flipped one house. I'm a professional. Yeah, whatever, right? You haven't been seasoned enough. So I said, let's prove the model. Do you know, we didn't start teaching until we did over 400 flips, over 400, right? That's when we started teaching what we did because I knew we, we don't know everything, but we know a lot because we've been through a lot, getting kicked around a lot. So as a way of giving back to, to help other people, in 2016, we started training other people how to build the life of their dreams like we did. That's what we did in 2016 because everybody kept asking questions and how do you do this and how did you get there and how did you make so much and how do you guys not work for anybody else? And how do you travel so much? And how do your kids go to private school? How, how do you do all this? Like you seem like you're home in the day. I don't get it. So the more they asked questions, the more we decided we wanted to help people. And that is where the home flipping workshop was born. You know, this is really being sponsored today by the home flipping workshop, right? That's, that's one of our um, uh, workshops that we do. It's, it's very, very famous because it's actually gone virtual because of COVID. So now we're able to impact people all over the country and it's growing like rapid fire because people want a better way to live. I said when I opened up today that for us, real estate investing has been life-changing and we absolutely know it can be life-changing for you too. 
you got to continue taking action like you took action to be here today. And you are still here. So if you're still here, you're still taking action because action is continuing to take action, right? Not just doing something one time. Now, that's our background. And that's just an overview of it. But today we're covering what real estate investing can do for you. For you. Now, we're talking about the three main ways that we invest in real estate. The three main ways. We do flips. We do several different kinds of flips, which I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to probably expand your vision again when I show you how you can flip houses without doing full renovations. You're going to be like, what? But I'm going to show that to you. Wholesaling. Another way we do. Okay. This is one way that we do a lot of business is wholesaling. And then, of course, we do rentals, both long and short term. There's lots of ways you can make money in real estate, right? These are the three main areas that we focus on. We, we believe when you focus, you can do much better than doing 100 things at once, right? If you try and chase two rabbits, you lose them both. You focus on one. So there are three things here, but they're all kind of simultaneous. They all kind of work together, okay? So as you're taking notes, and I know it's been a lot of information. I know your brain is kind of doing this, but stay with me because we have a lot more to go. I know you came to a free workshop and you're thinking, my God, this guy hasn't stopped talking. He keeps giving me more and more information. You asked for it. I'm giving it to you. Okay. So to accomplish all these methods, you're going to have to focus on five main areas. So I want you to write this down if you would, please. You're going to learn how to find. We already talked about how to find, didn't we? How to find off-market deals. You have to learn how to fund. We've already talked about that. That was the first thing we talked about. Boom. Funding. Fixing. You got to learn how to fix the houses, right? And then you got to learn how to flip the houses. So find, fund, fix, flip. And last but not least is hold. Hold. Now, we've been discussing and we're going to keep discussing all these here today. So let's discuss why real estate investing is a good decision for so many people. Like, why is it a good decision for so many people out there today, right? Well, real estate has appreciated for over 100 years. Over 100 years, real estate's appreciated. It's always gone up year after year after year. Real estate always keeps up with inflation. Think about maybe a house that your parents bought and think about what they paid for it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Is it worth the same as it was now? No, my parents paid 12,500 bucks for their house and I think my mom still lives there and I think that house has probably been in the same house for 60 something years. It's probably $200,000 now or more. And they paid 12,500 bucks for it. You see, real estate keeps up with inflation, right? Real estate allows cash flow and appreciation while growing your future. So real estate allows you to make cash flow. People pay rent every month, that's cash flow, right? But it also gets the appreciation, so it's a double whammy, right? It's a double whammy when you're investing in real estate. You get two ways you're making money, cash flow for today's expenses and appreciation for tomorrow's wealth. Real estate, if you do this right, allows for tremendous tax breaks, legal tax breaks to keep more of your hard-earned money where it belongs in your pocket. And as you've already seen today, real estate can be purchased creatively, not just with a bank, not just with a bank, okay? It does not require you to have any of your own money or credit, which I've already shown you today, but I just wanna reiterate the importance of this. Good credit can help you, but you don't have to have good credit to get started. And it can be done part-time alongside a full-time job. Matter of fact, many of our students do it part-time alongside a job, okay? If done correctly in the way we teach, it can be very low risk. Is it risky? Yes. If you do it wrong, you can lose big time. But if you do it the way we teach you to, we're gonna minimize, I teach all of our students how to minimize risk. Minimize risk, maximize return. You do not need a license. Common question, do I have to have a license? No, you do not have to have a real estate license to flip houses, to be a real estate investor, nothing, okay? And you don't need any experience, no experience. All you need is a strong desire for a better future. That's it. My question is, is that you? Is that you? Let's do a reality check. I hope you have your pen and paper and you're still doing this. Ready? This is gonna sting a little bit. 84% of all Americans have less than $84,000 saved for retirement. Less than $84,000 saved for retirement. Over 90% of Americans will outlive their retirement. If you outlive your retirement, then what will you do? I hate to tell you, but ignoring the problem is not a solution. 
It will not make it go away. And so many people ignore this like it's going to go away, and it's not going to go away. If you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you. So let's see where you fall on this equation, okay? Stay with me. What income will you need to live a comfortable retirement in the future? So when you want to retire five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, what's a comfortable amount per month that you need? Now, I'm not saying what you want. What do you need to live comfortable? Let's just say it's 6,000 a month. That's in today's money, right? In today's money. Let's say it's 6,000 a month. Just for argument's sake, that's a, that's a number people can kind of live with. It's not great. It's not bad, but that's what it is. Now, your financial advisors are going to suggest that you, you invest in very conservative investments, especially in retirement, because you don't want to upset your nest egg. You don't want to put your nest egg at risk. So they're going to suggest you go in low investments like a CD or a bond or uh, low risk money markets, that kind of stuff. And uh, they pay on average a 4% APR, so a 4% return rate on your money. Now, Stay with me, okay? So 4% is the amount that most people get in retirement. Right now you say, well, I'm making 6% now. You might be, but your financial advisor is going to say, listen, take that. You don't want to risk your nest egg because you don't wake up being 75 years old and have you know $300,000 disappear overnight, right? Which can happen in the stock market. So you want to stay conservative. Here's a reality check. To keep $6,000 per month after taxes, you're going to have to earn about $8,000 a month, right? Am I correct on that? So think about it, you have to pay taxes still. The government still wants their money. They don't care how old you are. They still want, they still want our money, right? So you're gonna have to earn 8,000 a month to keep 6,000 a month. So let's see how much you need to have in savings, right? To live comfortably in retirement. Here's an equation you can do. You can do your own math on this if you want to. If you want to make $8,000 a month times 12 months, right? Your annual income is $96,000, right? That's your annual income. If you had to make $8,000 a month, and that translates to a net of $6,000 a month. You with me on that? Divide $96,000 by your annual interest rate. We just said 4% is the annual interest rate. So you divide, this is what it looks like. $96,000 divided by 0 0.04. That gives you a number of $2.4 million. Listen, you can put your own numbers in there if you want to. If you say, Glenn, I got to make 10,000 a month. I got to make 20,000 a month. Great. Then you do the math and you, I want you to see how much you need. If you say, well, I'm going to have 6% when I, when I get older. I'm going to have 8%. Great. Do the math, right? Use this. Math doesn't lie. You're going to have to have $2.4 million saved so you can live off the interest and live comfortably. Here's my question. How far away are you from having $2.4 million saved right now, right? How far are you away and how will you get there? Going to get there by hoping or praying or win the lottery, right? Is that, is that kind of your plan? I know this stings a little bit, but I want to tell you a story. You may have heard it before. There was a man who was stuck on a roof during a massive flood and he prayed to God to come save him. And a guy went by in a small rescue boat. He was by himself and he said, man, jump in. It's okay, you can jump in with me. He said, no, no, I'm good. God's gonna save me. The guy said, okay. He went on. Next thing you know, a Coast Guard boat came by and said, man, the roof's getting taller and taller. The water's getting taller and taller. The roof's getting smaller. You, you gotta get on the boat with us, man, or you're gonna die. He said, no, I'm good. God's gonna save me. Next thing you know, Coast Guard chopper went by. The water was at the very top of the roof. They said, you got to get on here. This is your last chance or this current's going to sweep you away and you're going to die. And he said, no, 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 I'm good because God's going to save me. Helicopter flew off. Next thing you know, the water overtook him. He couldn't hold on anymore and he drowned. He went to heaven. He said, God, what happened? I kept praying for you to save me. I don't understand. Why didn't you save me? He said, listen, man, I sent you a boat I sent you a Coast Guard boat and I sent you a helicopter. At some point, you got to say yes to those things. I tried to save you, but you didn't let me save you. Maybe we're the answer you've been looking for. I don't know. Maybe we're that answer. Listen, our home flipping workshops, what I want to talk to you about right now, we have a lot more content to cover. 
but our home flipping workshop is a live three day virtual training that I would like to invite you to attend with us. Imagine what you learn with three days with Amber and I and my full team there to help you in three days. Here is what you'll get. And by the way, I want to make sure I'm clear about this. It is virtual. Sometimes people say, well, Glenn, where is it? And my answer is always, if you, if you look, look at us online, my answer is it's in your living room. It's virtual. We used to go out and do this in hotels years ago. We did all this, but you know what? We found the virtual world. We can impact so many more people and you can do it from your home and I can do it from my home. I don't have to leave my family and you don't have to leave your family. And you can learn about changing your life with real estate investing right from the comfort of your own home, your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen table. I don't know where you're going to do it from, but do it right from home because it's virtual on Zoom. And we realized through the magic technology that I get to connect with you. Like when we're live in the events, I'm talking to you, I have your name, we get to know each other and we build these friendships that are lasting a lifetime. And COVID changed everything for us and now I get to impact and be part of you all over the country, which is amazing. So here's what you get at our workshop. I'm going to tell you what you get and what the investment is. Now stay with me because you'll be happy. I promise. Here's exactly what you get. You get our proven find, fun, fix, flip, and hold system. Like you leave there knowing what to do, knowing what to do next, right? Well, today we're covering as much as we can, but it's tough to dive in. Remember, we've only got a limited amount of time here. In three days, we can cover a lot more. Okay, a lot more. Teach you how to get wealthy flipping houses without using your own money or credit. I just talked about those today, but imagine that we dive into those even deeper, even deeper, right? And show you what to do and kind of talk about the forms you need and that kind of stuff. That's what we do at the workshop. Here's something that no one ever talks about. You see, Amber and I are very transparent people and we believe in teaching people what can happen too. We're going to have, you know, the biggest mistakes that you need to avoid while flipping houses. We're going to make sure you know the mistakes we've made. We've lost money on deals periodically. Every once in a while, that's happened to us in the past. We've learned from it. And now we teach people how to avoid those same pitfalls, those same potholes, those same cliffs that we had to go over, right? We've taken the bullet for you and we teach you how to do that. We teach you how to handle the business side of this hustle, right? There's a business side to this. How do you structure? How do you, how do you get uh, the tax stuff? How do you get the, how do you just get your checking account stuff? How do you pay people? How do you, there's a lot to it, right? It's not just buy a house, fix it, sell. It's a lot of parts that make up that full component. So we teach you all of that. Now, we actually send you a Federal Express packet, right? We send you a Federal Express packet. It looks like this. Boom, it comes in the mail to you. Well, not the mail. It comes in Federal Express and we have this shipped to you. Now, when you open it, right? I've already opened this one. This is what it looks on the back. It says, don't open the workshop begins. Some of you cheaters do. I know how you operate, but we'll send this out to you. We Federal Express this out to you. The week of the event, the week of the event, so don't expect to get it immediately, but the week of the event, this goes out. You have our follow through, right? Now this is this is really what we go through the entire workshop, but this has got a lot of things in it. Whoa, we'll get you on the, scam, on the screen here. You get our values here. These are some cutouts that we use when we you get to show to the screen as we, as we work through things together, work through projects and whatnot. There's all different types of workshop things that we do in here. You even have a copy of our home flipping evaluator that's right inside there for you. And we're going to do that in person with you. But I'll show you that. There's a Friday packet, Friday afternoon packet. There's a Saturday afternoon packet. It says open me when instructed. Some of you will not open it. Some of you cheaters will go ahead and open it. I know how you roll. It's okay. You know, the cool part is we actually even send you out one of our bracelets. So we send you out one of our bracelets just so you can feel part of us. And it's, we explain that during the workshop, but you'll get that as well. Now, let me just give you a, a warning here. We don't control delivery. 90% of you who buy a ticket for the event will get that. Some of you don't because Federal Express is, are humans and they make mistakes and things don't get out. However, you'll have electronic, right at the event, you'll have an electronic copy you can print out right there as well. We'll give you a link so you can print out PDFs and you'll have everything right there in the unlikely event it doesn't reach you. But we do our absolute best. We just can't control, you know, COVID, or <laughs> whatever else happens, right? The world's been kind of crazy. We do our absolute best to get that to you. We do a virtual property tour. Check this out. We actually do a virtual property tour and we use the home flipping event. You break up into a room with our real estate advisors, smaller groups of people, and you go through and you tour a house and you fill out our home flipping evaluator so you know how much to pay for a house so you don't lose your butt on a deal. And you do that live with our team. It's really cool. It's really interactive. 
You, we're going to teach you how to build a huge retirement income without using any of your own money. I'll blow your mind with that one, but that's how that works, right? Our real estate advisors will develop a specific plan for you to move forward based on your goals and your resources. So you're going to have an opportunity to meet with not only Amber and I, because Amber and I are very interactive. We do a cocktail hour. We kind of hang out. We have some fun. We do stuff together with you guys. And so we were very interactive through the whole workshop. Our whole team is, believe it or not, it's a lot. It's it's crazy how how much we've recreated the in-person experience. It's really I blown away. But our real estate advisors will develop a specific plan for you. So you'll leave there with a plan, like a written plan to say, here's my next steps based on my resources, right? What do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish? What should I put my focus on? And that's what we try. We try and meet with everybody there. Whoever wants to meet with us, we'll meet with you. Okay. So much more. This, this event has become something that other companies that try and do education have been blown away with how well we've done. And frankly, I have too. You know why I think it's so important, uh, why we've done so well? I love it. I love helping people reach their goals through real estate investing. You know why? I'm a guy that was born, you know, born broke. I'll tell you my story later at the workshop. I'll dive in more detail, but, and really had to grind most of my life. So when I can help somebody else not have to grind as hard because I can shorten the learning curve. What we do is tell people fold time, right? The more you learn, the more you fold time so you can get your goals faster. Do you want to get your goals slower or faster? I mean, duh, right? You want to get there faster, but I love what I do. Look, you can hear it in my voice. I love what I do. I meet, we, have, we actually have students come to the workshop and share their experience with you guys so you can talk to them and, or get to know them a little bit and what they've done, right? I love what we do. And I think that's why we're so successful. And that's why we've been able to help thousands of people all over the country reach their goals for real estate investing. You've seen a handful today and you're going to see some videos of other people just here in a minute to get an idea of kind of who we've helped. And you can research us online and you can find out that we have over 800 five-star reviews between Google, Facebook, I think there's some on Yelp and wh wherever else we're all around, but there's no bad reviews about us. I'm sure someday someone's going to write something because that's just how human beings can be. But we have over 800 five-star reviews. No BS. This is real. We've been doing this. You look back our dates. They go back to 2016, right? And this is what some of our people had to say, right? So Francisco Gonzalez said, the three days have provided a treasure, it means treasure trove, treasure trove of information that I didn't know I didn't know. I'm so grateful to have received the amount of information that will help me find, fund, fix, and flip deals correctly without avoiding or while avoiding mistakes of, the, of those with experience. This workshop also gave me the push I needed to do something more with my life. Melissa Ward said, I've, I have learned so much in the last three days. This workshop was well worth my money and time. Honestly, I feel like they could charge so much more for the product and presentation that was provided, but they care more about their students or what their students will get out of it. Excellent leaders and staff. Makes me so proud to read that. If you're looking for coaching, guidance, uh, mentorship, or just information on real estate, this workshop is a must. Thanks again for the amazing experience and motivation, Melissa Ward. Cynthia. Cynthia said, if you're interested in becoming a real estate investor, I highly recommend attending the home flipping workshop offered by Glenn and Amber Schwarm of VestorPro, a real estate of mind. While the investment of time, three full days, seems like a lot, the amount of information you receive from Glenn, Amber, and their team is valuable and, pre and presented clearly and professionally. You will get that one or could be many aha moments during the workshop that will launch you to building a new business for yourself, which will, if done correctly, with intent, will bring you the financial success you seek to live to live your best life. I love these things. Here's some Google reviews. Glenn and Amber are awesome. They are thorough and they and they genuinely want you to succeed. I will not only they will not only teach must be they, he put I will not only teach you content, they help you get rid of a head trash uh, and help you think like a real estate investor. I'm so grateful for this workshop and I'm so happy I found them. I also recommended them because they take pride in being honest and doing things the right way and their values are the same as mine. They are family driven. Yes, we are. I recommend their podcast, The Real Estate of Mine, their YouTube channel. They've even given more confidence. Uh, they have given me even more confidence than I started with. I am so excited uh, to start my real estate investing journey. Again, they are awesome. And last but not least here, I just picked uh, just a few. Oh my goodness, the information and support plus the resources they provide you with are awesome. They truly want you to succeed, all right? As I stand there and read those for you, I know it's a lot to take in, but I am proud, 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 like a proud papa, knowing that we have made an impact in so many people's lives. 
here's the value. You should yourself say, okay, what's it going to be? What's the charge going to be? Stay by. I promise you'll be very happy. Here we go. The value. Over $9,750 worth of training and investing resources are given at the event, right? It's probably more, worth more than that, but let's just call it that. You won't even pay a fraction of that to attend all three days. Now, we price this so anybody who is serious about making a change in their life, they could afford to attend. If you knew that you could learn enough to your first flip and make $63,500, would $590 for all three days be a screaming deal? If you knew you could invest $590 and turn around and, and learn enough to generate $63,500 in the next six months or the first year, is that a good deal? Of course it's a good deal. It makes sense. Well, we're not going to charge you that. Here's what we're doing. The tuition today, right now, is only $59 for all three days. Yes, I actually, I'm not done yet. $59 for all three days for you and a partner. Now, I believe so much in this, it's 100% fully refundable. So on day one, you go through the whole day. The first day, it's a Friday, you go through the whole day. If you don't feel like you received $5,900 worth of value in business tips, in ideas, in coaching, in the way you change, you know, the way you set your business up, in the structure you choose. If you don't feel like you had an idea or something that could make you $5,900 or save you $5,900 in your business, get your money back. Like on Friday night, the first night, go to my team and say, it's not for me, I'm out. And you get your money back. No questions asked, no hassle, on the spot, bam, right? We don't mess around. If we're not for you, no problem. But my guarantee is I'm going to give you 100 times your investment. Now, you have nothing to lose and probably everything to gain. Now, let's talk about this. You can buy your ticket right now at homeflippingworkshop.com. Now, you can get $10 off. I know it's not a big deal, but it, it drops the price to $49. $49. It's ridiculous. You know what that $49 really is for? Really, it's for this. It's to ship you out that Federal Express package, right? That's that's really what we're doing is covering our cost to ship this out to you, okay? So that's really all that we're doing, okay? So you can feel like you're part of us and get all that information. So you buy your ticket now at homeflyworkshop.com, get 10 bucks off using promo code READY. So when it comes up for promo code, put READY and it will charge you $49. You get a ticket for you and a guest for 49 bucks, plus here's something else. By doing it today, You'll get instant access to our proprietary home flipping evaluator and training video. That's something that we have that we'll give you immediately. It's You'll get access, access to the home flipping evaluator. And I think it's an hour, it might be 40 minutes to an hour long training that I do on how to exactly use line by line and how the calculations work, what calculations you should use in, in um, for repair costs and what calculations you used to determine what to pay for a house and what all that means. And that video is very detailed and you'll get that today. You'll get that instantly, okay? And, we, and at the workshop, we go over it live. So you'll be ahead of the game by everybody else. To get the extra bonus, you gotta purchase your ticket by the end of the presentation and use promo code READY. Here's something else. Do you know we do a capital raising session at the workshop? So one of the days we do a capital raising session where literally we spend time with everybody right there and we actually have a team of lenders that are there and we actually go out without even putting a mark on your credit score, they'll go out and tell you what you're pre-approved for. Whether you choose to take it or not is totally up to you. But we usually raise one to three million dollars at our home flipping workshops that our students can take advantage of for funding, okay? So many of you will get instant funding at our workshop for your business right there at the workshop if you choose to take it. Here's a double bonus. Making money is great. Keeping money is better. I always like to you know, fully protect your assets from lawsuits. Right? We've all heard about people that get sued every now and again from people, whatever. But how, do you want, how, do you want, how would you like to protect yourself and know how to do that? How would you like to keep more of your hard-earned money by paying less in taxes? Listen, we, one of the many speakers, there's multiple speakers at the events, not just Amber and I, we have multiple other professional speakers that come in and talk at the event to give you education on things you didn't know you didn't know. One of the highlights is having one of our partners come in and they are the best in the country at teaching you how to use the correct structure, like with LLCs, with trusts and all that, to accomplish your goals and to keep more of your money. Protect it and keep it. And that's one of the highlights of our workshop 
is they come and speak and they're live at the event. You can ask questions on Zoom. It's pretty cool. We, we, once you see how we, we do it all, it's pretty cool. But you can learn how to protect yourself. So if you're somebody already in business, if you've got some assets, you want to start protecting those, this is the place to be, right? We'll teach you how to do all of that. So bottom line, if you're interested in more info or in signing up today, we have a lot more to learn today. I know it's been a long day so far, but I promise we bring value. Like I don't want to not bring value, so I'm bringing value to you. But the link for more information and to go sign up is right here. Homeflippingworkshop.com promo code is ready. Homeflippingworkshop.com promo code is ready. The dates and the times are on the website. Okay, dates and times of the next workshop are on the website. Listen, here's a quick video from some folks who were recently at our Home Play Workshop and just hear what they had to say. They're just like you and they were skeptical and not really sure, but see what they had to say. Check it out. Hey, how Hi. you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, we're doing good. Thank you very much for uh, excited. yeah, very excited. Thank you very much for uh, everything you've done and given us today. I'm just like foaming at the mouth, wanting to go and make this happen. Long story short, I, I want to start making money, and I, yeah, I'm d I'm done with eating chicken wings. I want to eat filet mignon. <laughs> I, I, I want I want I want I want big. Franklin and Amber, thank you so much for you know for today. That's a lot of information out there that you've given us today. Not a lot of knowledge transfer. Thank you so much. I have to say the day has been, I, I, I leaned over to my daughter and I told her, in my master's degree, I learned more today than I did in my entire master's degree program, which is, you know, not, not about house flipping, but I feel like the information was so rich today and, and flipping houses has been such a black box for me over the years and I've always wanted to do it, but I just didn't know where to start. And so you guys really, um, it was it was huge for me. Guys, I want to first. I want to thank you. Um, thank you for doing this. What a what an incredible breadth of knowledge today. This was um, this was very insightful. Uh, I'm definitely surprised. You never know what you're going to get when you sign up for a program like this. We just got into the idea of we want to try to start to flip houses. We got passionate about the idea of starting to build something for ourselves. We did some searching, like the hows of how do you flip a house? Where do you start? And luckily, I came across you guys. And, um, you know, I talked about it with my fiance. We decided to jump. We, we signed up and I got you guys' welcome video. And just, um, man, I appreciated how genuine you guys see it. Like you're, you're two real people. This is interactive. It's in person. It's not just some pre-recorded videos that uh, you're going to hope you get some good information from. So again, guys, thank you so much for doing this. You have no idea how much you've actually helped me. Like you guys are awesome. Your values, everything. Like you guys are really, really awesome. And uh, what a what a beautiful Sunday it is. This is um, day three of what has been a semi-long, incredibly information-filled weekend. For for sixty dollars, the information you've given us is absolutely valuable. It uh, it blows that sixty dollars right out of the water. I have a very vast background. Uh, I was an escrow officer for ten years. I was formerly a real estate agent. Um, I worked with land developers, so I've got a really good real estate background. And I can honestly say from all the investigation and searching that I've been doing recently, you guys kick ass. <laughs> wow. Thank you <laughs> I'm very super much impressed. So I can imagine how those that don't have that background, they're impressed because I'm wow. impressed. All right. There's just some of our recent attendees that came to a home flea workshop just to give you their, their two cents and what they learned. And I, uh, you know, like I said, we have interaction, we have comments of those. I just, I love hearing those things. So, uh, so appreciate them. All right, hope that you join us and let's jump into some more content here. Wholesaling, you ever hear the term wholesaling? People don't always know what wholesaling is and I'm gonna do a high level explanation of it right now so that you know what wholesaling is. So that time someone says to you, well, I'm a wholesaler, you say, what is that? Well, here's what it is. A wholesaler is someone that sells the contract to a house, not the actual house. Now stay with me for a minute. Imagine that you found a house that was a really good deal. Remember, we make our money when we what? When we buy, right? We make our money when we buy. So imagine you find a house as a good deal. Let's say that house you find is for $50,000 for argument's sake. And it's a house, and I, listen, I wanna make sure I'm clear about something else that we're talking here today. Some people say, yeah, but I'm in California, Glenn. You don't know, my prices are you know half a million dollars for a fixer upper. I get it. Numbers are numbers. Our systems work no matter where you are in the country, right? 
it just they're just different numbers, right? But people are still buying houses every place. That's just how it works. As a wholesaler, let's say you find a house for fifty thousand dollars. Let's say that you do the math and you realize that after somebody puts fifty thousand dollars in that house, they can sell it for close to two hundred thousand. That's a great amount of money. What if you could buy that house for fifty thousand and sell that contract to another investor for seventy five thousand, right? Because that con let's say the contractor says, "Listen, I'll I'll pay you seventy five thousand because I'm going to put fifty thousand into it and I'm going to sell it and make fifty thousand myself." How great would that be? Well, that's what wholesaling is. Wholesaling is putting a house under contract, then selling that contract, not the house, selling the contract to another person. It's very common. Matter of fact, it used to not be so common. Now it's getting very commonplace in our industry. It's, it's how a lot of people buy houses. Remember I said before that you could buy houses from wholesalers? That's what I'm talking about. Buying houses from wholesalers. Okay, so these are people that find deals and there's still enough meat on the bone. They buy them so cheap that there's enough meat on the bone for you and for them. Now, in this scenario, I'm suggesting that you could actually buy houses and sell them and make that money. Now, it doesn't require any of your own money or any of your own credit, does it? Because you never actually close on the house, right? The other party closes it. At the workshop, we, go, we give an exa example. We dive into more details. Again, in the essence of time, I can't go into all the ins and outs of this today. I'm giving you a very high level overview of what wholesaling is. When you buy the deal cheap enough, you can sell that contract again because you bought it right. There's enough money in the detail for both of you. And at the workshop, we dive into more of this, but I want to tell you this. The average profit of a wholesale is twelve to fifteen thousand dollars per deal. Now this next line, I am not saying to brag because I'm not a bragger, right? But I want you to understand that our team, now we have a team of people that do this, right? Our team will do well over $1.5 million this year alone on just wholesale deals, just selling to other cash buyers. For years, I would generate leads and I would throw them away because I didn't want to buy in those areas or they were, you know, maybe a, a inner city I didn't want to mess around. Maybe it was out in the country I didn't want to mess around with it. And then I realized that other people do want those houses. So I'd sell them to them for a profit. We've made as little as $5,000 on a wholesale deal. We've made as much as $78,000 on a wholesale deal. That's our record right now. So there's a lot of money just for trading paper. And that's a common way to do business nowadays. So it's pretty awesome. Here's one of our student successes right now. Aaron and Amanda. They said, after learning from Glenn and Amber, we made 41,000 on our first five wholesale deals in our first four months, right? Aaron is a uh, professional uh, private pilot, actually. That's a private pilot. And um, Amanda is an architect. So they wanted to start investing in real estate alongside their current professions. They wanted to be able to, to, uh, to have Aaron be home more with the kids. But he said, she said, this is work, but it's totally worth it. We're excited about our family's future. So there is a lot of money in wholesaling. And again, we teach our students whatever method they want to specialize in, that's what we help teach you in, okay? So as you can see from this next slide, this is not really my area of expertise, right? Women are real estate investing rock stars. Well, I can't think of a better woman rock star in real estate investing than my best friend, my wife, my business partner, and mother of our children. Amber Schwarm. So Amber, come join me up here, please. If you would, my dear. Thanks, babe. I'm Very so excited good. to be here talking to all the amazing women out there. So listen, I'm excited to bring Amber up here and I want you to know why. Most of the time in traditional uh, partnerships like this, the man handles the construction and the woman handles the buying and selling of real estate, right? Yeah. That's what we've always found. That seems to be a traditional thing. You see the TV shows and all that. That has never been our role. We've always been very different, right, in what we do. So I, in the beginning, would go out and find the houses and handle the business side of things and the selling and all that. Amber handled all the construction because, frankly, I can barely read a tape measure. That's a true story. Very true. So I'm not so good at that part of it, right? But Amber was always the one out there doing that and really was, was spearheading all of the renovations of the hundreds that we've done over the years. She spearheaded all that and negotiated. So she was a woman living in a man's world, right? So... She's going to bring some awesome information for you to women. Now, men, listen, because you've got wives and you've got daughters and sisters and moms and aunts and people that you can encourage. Yeah. And potential business partners and people you're going to work with. So listen up. Okay. Because they have a lot more skills than we do. They may have been discounted in the past, but that's not the way it is anymore. We have so many students that are females that are being successful. And so please, both 
sexes take notes okay that's important as we get started here today so let's jump in and do your thing and amber is going to give you some awesome information for the women rock stars in real estate go ahead babe awesome thanks so much honey so you know i don't just think women are good at real estate i think women are great because there are there are so many natural life skills that you automatically bring to the table just because of your life experience that you make a few tweaks with those and that just is a game changer. It turns you into a killer real estate investor. And guys, listen, we, we all have insecurities when we're getting started about you know what we know and what we don't know. That just comes with the territory. But I'm telling you right now, managing a job site is a lot like managing a household. And, and I, have a, I have this little kind of standing joke that um, managing contractors is a lot like running an adult daycare. And that's no offense to contractors. I know you're out there too, and there are some good ones out there. But you know, it, it does take a lot of managing personalities and keeping people in line. So it is a lot like running a household and, and having kids. But if you think about just your daily life, women are naturally just master negotiators and it's it's not because we've trained to be that way or gone to school for it even it's just because that's what we deal with every single day between negotiations with your partner or your spouse um, definitely with your kids i mean how many conversations do you have all day long with your kids that are negotiations. Hey mom, can I have this? Can I do that? You know, it, it, it's kind of even exciting to like watch your kids become negotiators and you're like, wow, I didn't even know they had that skill. But not just your, your partner and, or, or your kids, but your other family members. Um, we even negotiate with our parents, even, even as grownups a lot of times workmates. If you, if you do have a job, you know, we're negotiating all the time with the people that we work with. So, when you adapt that just a little bit and, and tweak that into the real estate world, it is a huge asset to you and will definitely shorten your learning curve along the way. And the other thing that I think that you really bring to the table here as a woman is that you know this is true. Women get stuff done. Like when everybody else is talking about it, they're sitting at the kitchen table, like drawing up a plan or whatever. Who's the one that gets up from the table or gets off of the couch and just does? You know, women get things done when everybody else is just sitting there talking about it. If you think about it again, just with your everyday life, your responsibilities as, as a woman and a mom, you have so many skills. And, you know, we don't always think about having a grocery list or getting school supplies as managing inventory. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing as picking out the stuff that you need for your house, whether it's the light fixtures that you're going to use or the paint colors you're going to use. It's just inventory. It's just making a grocery list of stuff for the house instead of food. You know, with, with the shopping, you know, this, we were naturally good at fashion. You're naturally good at fashion and putting colors together and, and making things look good together. So that just goes hand in hand with being a real estate investor and organizing and coordinating. We already talked about negotiating, but juggling schedules. I mean, you know, half the time our, our husband or our spouse is like another kid in the house. So we're managing their schedules and doctor's appointments and dentist appointments for the kids and sports and after school activities. We manage everybody else's schedule, including our own. We manage all different personalities. I mean, if you think about, you know, if you are a mom and you have more than one child, you know this to be true. Every child has their own style of learning. Every child uh, responds differently to different different forms of discipline, much like a contractor would. Some, some contractors uh, you give tough love to and other ones, you know, you buy them pizza on Friday and they'll do anything for you. So just just like the, the way that you manage those personalities in your house, every kid has a different love language. You know, you have to find out what makes that child or that contractor tick. See how the similarities in, in, the, in your everyday life apply to real estate? Pretty cool, right? You know, and we're just naturally good problem solvers. Women rock at problem solving. You know, we don't, we don't watch our children hit a roadblock in their life and not try to help them solve the problem. So it's just, it's, it's really simple. And the other thing I wanna talk about here, and this is, this is actually a pretty big deal. Real estate investing definitely used to be a boys club. I mean, when Glenn and I started in 2007, um, I definitely felt like I was a woman in a man's world. I mean, some of the contractors looked at me like, this Texas blonde girl doesn't know what she's talking about, you know? And I really had to prove myself, but I think, that, that has really evolved there's been a shift in in that dynamic because more and more women are getting into real estate and managing the job site so i think contractors are getting more used to to dealing with women and um, it being more the norm than than abnormal 
Um, so I, and, and when you come to the workshop, we're going to teach you some of those things and how to sort out the good contractors from the bad contractors, which is actually a really good thing just to like not get the, not get the bad ones from the get go. But we'll talk about some of those, those problems that, that a lot of women have, um, that used to be barriers to entry that are not barriers anymore. Talking about barriers, I'm so excited that more and more women are breaking those barriers and are just killing it. And the other thing I want to talk about here, and I think, um, you know, there's diff all different age groups of women that come to our workshop, which is also really amazing. I mean, I don't think the younger generation deals with this as much as like my generation and above, but sometimes we just put these self-limiting beliefs on ourselves. And, and I know with me, it was, it was almost like a, you know, like I said, I'm, I was in a man's world. So I had that, that limitation of, you know, what if I am successful? What if I do make more money? You know, like we have these stories we tell ourselves. What if I start making more than my spouse? <laughs> How is that going to go over? He'll probably be really excited. You know, he might have to get over the little ego, ego boost at first or the ego crunch at first. But, you know, then I'll get excited and maybe even get on board with you. But those barriers, we don't need to hold ourselves back. We need to push forward. We need to push through those barriers and be that good example for all of the other women around you and your children and your families. And I am seeing that more and more at our workshops. And it just thrills me to no end to see so many people going after this. And the other thing that I really love is that more and more women are realizing that freedom of, of being your own boss and having that flexible schedule that you can work around your families and, and living that life on your terms and not having to ask a boss to take permission to take care of yourself and your family. A couple of years ago, uh, my daughter's classroom had this, this thing where the parents could come in and set it a blanket and read a, a story to their kids and, and have hot cocoa. It was a really cute little sweet thing. I think it, she was in first grade. And I went and of course did my thing. And some of the kids didn't have their moms there. And like, it, it broke my heart, not only for the child that wasn't able to have their mom there, but it broke my heart for the mom because I know the mom wanted to be there, but she either couldn't get off work, didn't have any more vacation time she could ask for, or she couldn't afford to take off work. And, you know, I scooped up the other kids and we put them on our blanket and we, we had a good time, but it, but it still made me sad in a sense because I wanted other women to share that. And I wake up every day. And I feel grateful for my life. I feel grateful that I don't have to ask a, ask a boss for permission to take the day off and, and do something with my kids or take them to that doctor's appointment or take a day off and go to the spa with my girlfriends or my husband. You know, we don't have to ask permission to do those sorts of things. And I, I, I also consider where I'm at right now a gift because I can share this with other women and empower them and and really show you that there is another way to live your life. There are so many women that are sick and tired of settling for just the paycheck. And you deserve to live a life that you love. And it's up to you to change that. And the other thing I want to add here is, is what's the example you want to set for the people around you, for your kids, for your sisters, for your nieces? for the other women's, for friends, you know, get off of that nine to five grind and do something that you are really proud of and that you can, you can live life on your terms, not making somebody else's dream come true. Because when you work for somebody else, that's what you're doing. You're making their dream come true. It's time for you to make your own dream come true. And I hope that you consider this an opportunity to do that and that you take steps forward to making your dreams come true. And I'm so excited for you to get the information and education you need because I do think that that, that lack of knowledge is a, a definitely a fear thing that holds people back from moving forward. And when you come to the workshop, you're going to get all of the information you need so that, you know, not only do you, do you know the information, but you're confident and you're inspired and you know that you have this in you to go out and do this and do it really, really well and set that great example for all those around you. And the other thing that comes with being a real estate investor that is, is awesome is that sense of fulfillment. You know, you took, if you're flipping a house, you took this ugly house and you turned it into something really beautiful. I mean, there's a sense of, of fulfillment that comes with that. And there's a pride that comes with it. Anytime anybody asks you what you do and you say, I flip houses or I'm a real estate investor, there's almost like that little cool factor that goes along with that. Oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. So there is that sense of pride and, and that, that comes with being a real estate investing rock star. So if you haven't already, I hope that you go get your tickets now to 
to the Home Flipping Workshop. I will love seeing you there. Um, Glenn and I both will love seeing you there and, and inspiring you and ho helping you reach your dreams and reach your goals. Um, before we wrap up, I do want to show you one video of a real estate investing rock star that Glenn and I have worked really, really closely with. Uh, she she started with no knowledge at all. She had no history in real estate and she is just killing it. And we are so proud of her. So let's take a look at what Pam has to say. What's up, good looking? Oh, how are you? It's so good to see you. I yeah. want you to tell some folks, you've been, you've been with us for a little over two years now, I think. And you yeah. took off and... Tell everybody your background real quick. Um, I worked for the state for about 32 years. What I did was just implement programs. And you had, you had no experience really in real estate investing, just that years years prior in a different life, you had no. bought a few and didn't didn't go well, right? No. Yeah. No, and I was always kind of apprehensive about trying it again, but I did, I liked looking at properties. I just liked driving around looking at properties, Glenn, and imagining the vision of what can actually be done with it. So Pam, I want to take people on just a quick, I don't want to go through all the details, but I do want to go through a couple of things. Your first deal was a wholesale. I think you yep. made about five or six grand. Yep. That's true. Then you moved on from the wholesale deal and you did your first flip. Yes. And your what did you make on that first flip? 57,000. 5,000 for your first deal, 57,000 for your next deal. Just take me through numbers real quick. The next deal was, is that the church deal or no? Yes. You know, it was appraised for 239. Okay. <laughs> we did a great job. I'm sorry. We just did a great job and they saw the value that so, we added to the community. And so we bought it for 24. We put 90,000 in it. It was appraised for 239. And so Pam. Yes. That's over $100,000 in equity profit on that one property that's i'm doing the math right yeah that's why we're holding on to it and we're just doing a cash out refi to go do the next between equity and flips and wholesale what do you think you're at you've got to be in the couple hundred thousand three hundred thousand range right you got to be yes uh, easily total real estate that we purchased you know in terms of value i added it up a couple of days ago it was uh, five hundred and sixty four thousand. do you think you'd be where you are today if it wasn't for our help no I wouldn't have even tried it. And, and, and the larger, the larger projects are doing more than one project. I'm going to try and do more than one project at a time. Uh, before that, I wouldn't have tried it at all. Yeah. Um, I would have just bought a house and just tried to rent it. But now you buy it at a discount. If you buy it at a discount, buying it right, rehab it right, staying within the budget and the work scope, then you can make money to go to the next deal. Yep. And so it's the system. I don't know how else to explain it. I just love talking about your system and the paperwork and the Excel well, spreadsheets. I just can't think of anything else than to say, you know, thank you guys so much for being supportive of, of me and my dream because I want to change the legacy for my family and my children. So thank you for that. Well, thank you, Pam. We love you. We think you're great. I know I got you on early today, so I appreciate you changing your schedule around. Thanks for being here. Go close that 20 unit down. Will you go get that sucker done? <laughs> Wow, how am I supposed to follow Amber and Pam? Two rock stars, way better looking than me in the first place. I agree, it was, I'm sure you're probably saying, thank God I got to see them and not you anymore. I understand. But man, those are two powerful presentations and I just love to watch that. My wife, I couldn't be more proud of her. She's an awesome business partner, as you can see. And you guys who come to workshop, be able to hang out with us and talk to us. And yes, we banter, we have fun, and um, we, we make it all work somehow, which is pretty cool. But I'm, uh, I'm blessed to have her as a partner. So great job. And Amber, way to deliver to the women here. Way to deliver. It's pretty great. And guys, hope you paid attention because it will come into play in your life. Here we go. Let's talk about fixing, right? The next F is fixing. So we've talked about finding off-market deals and how to fund those deals, right? Find, fund. The next F is fix. Let's discuss how to fix those deals. Again, I could spend days on this topic alone. I'm not going to, but I want to give you some high level tips and techniques to help you be a good fixer on your houses. True or false? True or false? You have to do the work yourself to make the most money. Is that true or false? A lot of people think it's true. You know, do it yourself looks so attractive on paper. It does until you actually get into it, right? Then you start realizing maybe it's not that good of a deal. So the answer, true or false, is false, false. 
What you want to do, and I want to change your mind here if you're somebody who said, no, no, I'm a contractor. I do the work myself. Make the most money that way. I'm going to challenge your thought right now. You want to use your time at the highest per hour rate, right? And sub out the rest. So what is the best use of your time? What's the best use of your time? Think about this for a minute. The best use of your time is to go out and look for those $63,500 deals, right? If it took you cumulatively a month between making offers, looking at houses, driving for dollars, um, answering phone calls, negotiating, what, all the things that we teach people to do at our workshop, if it took you a month in total, but you landed a deal that made you $63,500, would that be worth a month of your time? Now, yes, you still have to flip it. You still have to go through all that process, but just the finding part took you a month. And you're going to make $63,000 for that? That's worth your time. That's a lot better than laying tile or painting the wall, right? Or digging up the yard out front or doing landscaping because you think you're saving a thousand bucks. You're not. I'm challenging your thought process here to say, I was the same as you. The first two houses, Amber and I did all the work ourselves. And I quickly realized that sucked. I quickly realized that that's not good. It's not good for your health. My back still has issues this day from putting a countertop in on the first house. I had no business doing that kind of work. But I thought I was saving money, but I wasn't saving money because I wasn't looking for my next deal. And consequently, in our first year, we did one deal and then three the next year. But it took us a long time to find that next deal because I was too busy working on the business and not thinking about how to get the next deal. Does that make sense? So always find the highest use of your time, the most per hour rate. That's where you want to put your time and sub out the rest. Building your contracting team. This is one of the toughest things that we go over. And Amber made a comment about contractors before, and we have a love-hate relationship sometimes because there's, there's, there's some good ones. There's a lot of bad ones out there. Even you contractors who are watching today are saying to yourself, I know, there are good ones. Like, you're, if you're here, you're probably a good one, right? But there's a lot of people that are not so good. So how do you do this? Well, number one, use referrals to locate the best contractors. That's a, that's a you know, rather than use yellow pages or advertisements, or flyers along the side of a, the highway, I recommend that you use referrals to find the best contractors. Here's another value tip. Go to Home Depot early in the morning to find the best ones, right? Go to Home Depot early in the morning to find the best contractors. Now, you always wanna use a contract that protects you and includes penalties. You cannot have handshake agreements with contractors. You don't have it when you buy a house, so why would you have it when you renovate a house? You spend sometimes just as much money doing that. So be smart and always have a contract that protects you. And I'm going to recommend that you include penalties. Penalties for deadlines. If they don't hit deadlines, there's a daily penalty. Daily penalties can help motivate people to do the right thing. Okay, so that's important to have in there. You always want to provide them with a detailed scope of work. A detailed scope of work. So you want to lay out exactly what they need to be doing. What, what skew do they use? You know, what paint color? What skew is that? What, what skew for the bathroom light? What skew for the uh, kitchen cabinets, right? What skew, what color countertop? What style countertop? What color roof? You know, whatever it might be, you wanna be very specific in your scope of work. You wanna treat this like a business. You don't wanna just say, hey, make it look good, right? It's your business, you have to own that. So make sure you put together a scope of work and then you wanna manage the contractor, right? You wanna manage the contractor. Once you lay out the plan and the specifics for what you need, then, you have to manage the contractor to deliver that plan. Does that make sense? Right? So that's what you want to do. You want to manage that contractor to get that done. And here's a tip. This tip alone, if I never see you again, if you just come with a free, we never see you again, this tip will save you tens of thousands of dollars and all kinds of headache. Never pay money up front. In your contract, never pay money up front, especially not large chunks of money. Okay? Now, the contractors can be in a tough spot too. So they might need a little bit of money for good faith, but we give a small amount of good faith payment after the first day of work is done. That's how we do it so nobody loses. There's a little, little tip you just learned today, okay? You learned lots of tips today, right? Just for free. So I wanna make sure you take that. So we dive into a lot more of this process at the workshop. We dive right into this process of the workshop and really dive in. Uh, we spend a couple hours actually in this section going over different kinds of paperwork and different forms and there's some training videos we play and it really goes over the different forms you need for contractors uh, and all that. So it's, it's a process and again, we don't have time to do all of that here today. We're doing as much as we can to give you as much value as we can, but this is one of those areas where I'm going to give you a high level and at the workshop, we're going to dive into more of that.
Find, fun, fix, and flip. Flip. Flip is the next one. Now, I might open your eyes here to some things you didn't know you didn't know. So I hope you enjoy this section. Most people think that they flip houses just like what you see on HGTV, because that's the pretty version, right? You watch these shows on TV and they buy a house, they fix it up and they flip it. And there's, oh, that's great. That's how you make money. And that's what we thought for years. But did you know there are many other ways to flip a house after you buy it? Here's some examples. As is, as is, okay? You can buy a house and sell it without ever touching it. We give several examples at the workshop of this and we talk about it. It's pretty cool actually, but there are many houses that we've bought almost sight unseen, but we know we bought it cheap enough where we can sell it to somebody else. And so that's a way you can buy a house and literally sell it to somebody else, flip a house as is. You could do what's called a quick flip. Okay, a quick flip is when you do very little to a house. We recently had a house where we just put uh, some work on the back porch, put a new hot water heater in, sold it, and made a $45,000 profit. We just fixed a couple of things so that, so that somebody with a bank loan could come in and buy it. Those two things were impeding somebody that was trying to buy with a bank loan. They couldn't buy it. So we went and bought the house, put those things in, and then sold it for a whole lot more to somebody who could get a loan on the house. But before that, they couldn't get a loan. People say, well, I don't understand. Like, why, why, wouldn't they, why wouldn't the seller do that? I don't know. I don't care. They don't want to do it. Maybe they just, they, I, don't, I don't know what the situation was. They may have been older. They may have been in a state. They may have been out-of-state owners. They didn't care, right? That's a motivated seller. They were trying to sell the house and loans kept falling through. Does this make sense? Loans were falling through because banks are saying, there's no hot water heater and that back porch is unsafe. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna give you a loan for the house. So when the seller, instead of saying, get that fixed, called us and said, will you buy my house? You bet. Bought the house for like 60 grand, whatever it was, put a couple thousand dollars into it and then sold it for like 150, whatever, whatever that math is. It made like $45,000 and all was said and done. Just by doing a couple simple things. Because we found what? A motivated seller. I'm sure you said seller. So now you know, motivated seller. Cosmetic flip. Cosmetic is just that, nothing major. No roof work. We call it no majors. No furnace, no roof, no new kitchens, you know, uh, no new bathrooms. Just simply clean it up. Cosmetic flip. Um, we do it right. One thing we teach out of the gates, I want to make sure we're all clear about this in case we never see each other again, which I think many of us will see each other again. But in case we don't, you have to do this business right. You got to do it with honesty, integrity, and character. If we find a problem, we fix it. We never hide anything. We don't go looking for problems, but if we do find something, we fix it. Okay, so in a cosmetic flip, as long as you know, you're not tearing walls out, you probably won't find any other problems. So you just paint it up, make it look good, clean it up, boom. Okay, that's a cosmetic flip. And of course, a full renovation. For renovation, that's what you see on TV. That's when you buy a house, you go through and put a new kitchen, a new bathroom, or new bathrooms. Um, you put new carpet, new floor, right? Whatever it might be. You, you, uh, you fix walls. You, you may put an opening or pass through from the, from the kitchen to the dining room. A lot of things you could do in a full renovation, but that is a great way to get a lot of money out of a renovation. A lot more work, but you can do it. And then we have what's called a value add, a value add flip. Value add means now you want to add an extra bathroom. Maybe you want to add an upstairs. Maybe you want to add a second level. All together, right? Not, I said upstairs, I meant upstairs bedroom, but you want to add a second level, whatever it might be. This is adding value to the house, which will create more profit for you. Now, that can be risky. You have to make sure you know what you're doing because you can over renovate in that case. People say, well, I'm gonna put a second level on. You might not get your money back out of that deal. So you have to know what you're doing with that, right? That's not for rookies, but that's a way that you can also flip a house. And last but not least, my favorite is rentals. Rentals. So let's talk about the last F, or last, it's not an F actually, but find, fun, fix, flip, and hold. So the last one, not, uh, but uh, not at all least, is my favorite, which is hold. I told you we're going to teach you how to build a massive portfolio of rentals at our workshop. I mean, it's probably one of the most sought after presentations after somebody sees it. They're like, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually show you a spreadsheet that you can predict your future by how many houses you buy without ever using your own money and without ever being a landlord. Now, this has been coined the Burr method, the Burr method. Here it is. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. That's it. So you buy a house, then you renovate that house, then you rent it out, put a tenant in there, then you refinance it and take your money back out of that house 
and then you repeat that cycle. Now you just took all the money back out, you buy another house and you do it again. It's called the Burr Method. I'm telling you that the passive income in life, this is where it's at, right? Passive income is where it's at. It's money that comes in while you sleep. Listen, flipping houses is great. Making that large chunks of money is great. Wholesaling is great. Making smaller chunks, but chunks of money for just turning over, turning over deals. That's all great. Wealth, true wealth. Pam talked about leaving a legacy for her family. Pam's got an incredible rental portfolio being built, right? She's leaving a legacy for her family. Our students are leaving legacies for their families and they're living the legacy now because they have passive income. It's income that comes in month after month after month because people pay their rent. People pay their rent, even through COVID, even when they weren't allowed to pay rent. Most of our tenants out of, out of dozens and dozens of rentals, only a couple people didn't pay because people still want a place to live and we still get an income off that. It's income that comes in while you sleep. I think you need to understand the importance of that and the value for what we teach with that. So we just sort of touched on this and Pam talked about it, you know, building wealth and a legacy. What would your life be like? Think about this for just a minute. And we're getting ready to wrap up here, guys. So just think about this for a minute. What would your life be like if at the first of every month you had more than enough money to cover your expenses, guaranteed? Some people have more month than money. Some people have more money than month. Where do you want to be, right? Think about waking up in the, in the first of every month and you knew that no matter what you did that month, as long as you didn't try and go out and buy something crazy like a new plane or an island, that you had enough money to cover all your basic expenses every single day that month. Would that bring you peace? What if you never again had to worry about money because you always had enough? And when you leave this earth, that income can be passed on to your family. Wouldn't that be amazing? Listen, we're getting ready to wrap up. And if you haven't bought your ticket yet, I'm gonna encourage you to go buy it. I'm gonna play for you a, a very short video because one of the questions we get, and I'm sure you're thinking it is, okay, I come to the workshop, I learn how quickly can I start making money? Is this like two years from now? Like, is this a course that take me forever? Like, how, how long will this take me? Well, I have good news. Everyone takes their a different pace. Everyone is different. It depends on their skill set, what they do, and frankly, their desire. How bad do they want it, right? In this market, it's there if you want it. Watch this video from a very recent uh, Home Fling Workshop student that we had and see how quickly, within two months, they got their first deal letter contract. This is me interviewing them at the last Home Flipping Workshop, actually, so check this out. You haven't even been here for two months and you've, I understand you've locked down your, I saw it in Facebook, right? You put in the group and you've got like almost 30 comments on there. I love, I saw you, I'm like, ah, oh, they bought a house, ready to go. I love, I love like out of the gate, start like that. Tell us yeah. about that house. So now you bought that house. What do you expect to make on that flip? So we just closed on that uh, two days ago on Thursday. It's an awesome craftsman home, 1920s craftsman, got some great character to it. If we stay with the budget we've done with our contractor, we should make uh, about fifty-five thousand dollars this year. About fifty-five thousand. Yeah. How about that? You guys excited about that? <laughs> uh, we're very excited. First deal, fifty-five grand projected. This is fantastic. You're two months, if that, into our program. I'm. <laughs> would you say it's worth it? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So you can get off to a fast start. It just depends on you, right? We're gonna bring the information, we're gonna bring the value, we're gonna bring the support, we're gonna give you options, we're gonna show you what to do, we're gonna give you steps, we're gonna have you leave with a plan, but the rest really falls on you, right? In closing, I wanna ask you a few questions, right? We're down to the end, and I wanna ask you a few questions. Are you where you wanna be financially? All this content, all these tools, all these things I gave you are great, but are you where you wanna be financially? Are you able to spend enough free time with the people who mean the most to you? Amber had talked about being able to be with our kids and having, you know, our students be able to now be moms. I'm thinking about Maureen, one of our students who's probably flipped seven or eight houses since she's been with us. And Maureen left a corporate job. I did not advise this, but she left a corporate job when she joined us. And she went full time and we've supported her every step of the way. But she gets emotional saying that she gets to now 
take her kids to soccer games when she had someone else doing that before and she barely made games because she traveled so much. You know, are, are you doing what you want to do with your time? Can you spend time with the people who mean the most to you? Here's another question. If something bad happened to you, if there was an illness, an accident to you or to someone that you loved and care about, could you take weeks or months off from your job without losing your job? I know these are hard questions to ask and to, and to think about. But again, just praying for things to be better doesn't make them happen. Solutions get put in front of you. It's your decision to take action to prevent these things from happening to you. We talked about having to save $2.4 million just to have a basic standard of living in retirement, which if we're being honest, 20 years from now, $6,000 a month won't pay for anything. Inflation will kill us. The number is probably more like double, but I don't want to scare you too bad with that. But how far away are you from 2.4 million just to have that basic living, right? Do you want to worry less and enjoy life more? You see, that's what real estate investing is. It's a vehicle. It's all it is. It's a vehicle to get you from where you are to where you want to go. It's a vehicle. It's something you have to do the rest of your life. You can flip a few houses. You can build a few rentals. You don't, you don't have to go crazy and do like what we do, but maybe you want to. For us, real estate investing was the answer that changed it all for us and for thousands of our students. This is not new to us. We're not new to the game, right? We're grandfathers in this game if you want to get right down to it. But we have a tried and true method. We know, and we know it's been vetted. We've worked through it. We've worked the kinks out. And we can help you reach your goals, right? We've helped thousands of students and ourselves. Will it be your answer too? Remember that 95% of all of our students start investing alongside their current job. That's a big thing. I don't want to leave my job. I never, I never advise that, ever. To our student Maureen, I never advised it, but it worked for her. Now, I'm not recommending that you do that, okay? When your investing income is greater than your job income, you'll have some cool choices to make. You have some really cool choices to make. Here's what I'll tell you. You're an action taker. Remember, I started this today by saying, I respect you because you're here. And if you're still here, you're my people. You're my people because you stuck it out when other people probably didn't stick it out. Ah, it's free. Ah, that stuff's a bunch of crap. <clears throat> Good. Go away. Don't want you. I want the action takers. It's the action takers who are the 10 percenters. And the 10 percenters, we're the ones that end up reaching our goals and enjoying life and ruling the world. We are the ones that do it. We're the action takers. You're an action taker. You're here. You already came to a free workshop and you're still sitting here? If you're still sitting here after all this incredible, and I'm sure your brain is like, holy crap. That's my goal. I always want to under-promise and over-deliver. And I do that at my three-day workshop as well. But no action equals no results and nothing will change for you. You know, I don't think you're that person because you're still here. But I have a lot of people that say, oh, they, buy, they, they register for an event like this and never show up because it's free. There's no value to them. If they knew what they got here, they wouldn't miss this for a second, would they? But they don't know because they don't take action. Because action equals results. But you know what else is true? Massive action equals massive results. It's as simple as that. You won't find a better workshop. And I'm not saying just because it's ours. Look at look online at our reviews. Look at our lack of bad reviews. Look at look at just look at our reviews. You won't find a more transparent couple, a more honest couple, a more hardworking couple, a more average couple that just wanted a better life. I'm just like you. I just wanted a better life for my family. And we teach exactly what we did to get where we are today. That's what we teach. We don't spend a couple hours with you. We spend three days with you. And professionals come in and my team comes in. It's, a, it's an event. I mean, if you think this was an event, spend three days with us. Let us dive into some of these things in more detail. And if you thought you learned things today that you didn't know you needed to know, imagine what you learned in three days with us. I know it's a time commitment. I get it. It's not the $49. That's not what it's about. It's about the three days. I know. Some of you have to take a day off from work. All I'm going to tell you is it is worth it. It is worth it, right? Ask everybody else around. Take a look at the reviews. Take a look and read. But don't stop being an action taker. Don't stop being an action taker. This is it. This is my last slide. Here's the deal. For buying your tickets right now, 
you get two tickets to the next home flipping workshop. And we're going to send you immediately the home flipping evaluator PDF copy with the special training video on how to use it and how to estimate every house you go to. Very detailed training and that's another gift we give to you for just providing so much value to you. We are searching for a handful of people to mentor to change your life forever. My question is very simple. Will that be you? And I won't know until we meet, until we talk and decide if you're that right person. But I'm excited to do that with you. Remember, go to homeflippingworkshop.com and use promo code READY. You got to do it now if you want to get the extra special bonus. And the four, you know, I know the $10 isn't a huge savings, but you know what? It's just my way of showing you that we believe in you. We invest time in you. We do this so that you know that you can create a better life for your family just like I did for my family, and just like their students and all the videos you've seen and all the, all the student testimonials you've read. And I could, we could spend hours and days going through testimonials. But I just want to pick a handful to show you that if we can do it and I can do it, you can do it too. Don't stop being an action taker now. My life won't change if you buy a ticket or don't buy a ticket. But your life could change forever. And I look forward to meeting you at the upcoming Home Flame Workshop. I know Amber does too and our entire team does. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, I look forward to meeting you at the Home Flame Workshop. Go grab your ticket now. Thanks again.